What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Play Versus Trio High School event featuring Fortnite. I'm your host for the day, Life with Panda, and joining me is Mini Miner. What's going on, my guy? What is up, Panda? Today is a very, very exciting day. We've got one of the first tournaments of Fortnite Season 8 Trios competition. We're back to normal for all of these teams, and for me, I'm so excited. I hope you are too. Yo, I am excited. This is the first time I get to hang out with Mini Miner, so I'm super pumped to do that. But we got to talk about how these players got to this point because this is the finals. Like this is literally days leading up to this point. You got qualifier one and two open to all high school players. Uh, top 66 advanced to the semifinals per region in qualifier one and two. Then in semifinals, 66 teams from NA East and 66 teams from NA West battled it out and only top 33 moved on to make it to the finals today. Yeah, it's been a grueling road to the finals for a lot of these teams. Some incredible plays have had to be made to get all the way this far. It's going to provide some very exciting entertainment for us. We've got trios, we've got 33 teams, and 33 of the best of the best in the NA East region to, uh, to have a look at today. And hopefully to see some great action. It's going to be so good. Uh, it is going to be sick, and I'm super excited. Honestly, Play versus putting on some great events for the collegiate space, and, and uh, big props to them. And now we got to talk about what's going on with the prize pool you know these players they're here competing for something and here it is 11 down from 11th to 15th walking away with 150 dollars all the way up to first place taking home their slice of 2400 dollars in prizing listen minor that, that's no uh small chunk of change here for the fortnite community this is definitely a very, very big chunk of change for these teams right now. $2,400 to be split between three of the of, of the trio, of course. This is some big money. This is some big competition. And I'm sure every single one of these teams are going to be trying their absolute hardest to not only walk away with $2,400 for their team, but also the bragging rights of coming first in one of the first tournaments of Season 8. I actually can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, it is going to be so much fun. I mean, with all the changes here in Season 8, uh, it, it's been interesting. It's been interesting to say the least, and I'm excited to see it kind of unfold here. Like you said, it's one of the first competitive events of the season, and who better to do it than play versus? But we got to talk about how these players are going to score some points here in this format, and uh, this format is really interesting. Uh, Mini Miner and I were talking about it because it's special. With each elimination being two points, that provides a lot of points in elimination, but with the Victory Royale being worth 57 points, placement is going to be a little bit more important. So finding a nice balance between the two is going to be super, uh, super realistic for these teams going into today. And that's what's going to be important. They need to find that balance if they want to come out on top on the leaderboard. Yeah, that balance is going to be so important for these teams, but it also gives the teams with maybe a little bit lower down on the leaderboard an opportunity because those elimination points, two per elimination, is so crucial. So maybe we'll see some really high elimination games today, or will we see some of the teams going for the more placement and really racking up those placement points? 57 of them on offer today. So this is a great scoring format because it allows for some placement players, but also some of the more aggressive players as well. We're going to see those today. You know, it it does. But when you have players like we have in this list of, of players here uh, for that are competing like Pump and Ved, you know that there is going to be some aggressive plays made because these two are two of the most aggressive players on NA East. And honestly, if you didn't know here leading up to this moment, actually Ved, Pump and Paper in the semifinals heat winning appearance, they had 19 eliminations in that one game. 19 wow. eliminations that is just wild to think about so will they replicate that same energy today or will we see them take it a little bit slower yeah, we're seeing some really, really big names in here, of course, as well. We're seeing LG Somerset, her trio, doing very, very well in the uh, in the last FNCS Opens qualifier, uh, qualify, actually getting 18th in that one as well. We're also seeing some fairly new names, maybe some names that you guys might not have heard of before, but this is a new stage. This is a big stage for a lot of these guys because this is a really, really good opportunity to perform at your highest and prove yourself to the Fortnite community. Yeah, I, I mean, this is pretty awesome to say the least. Play versus doing some big things and, and with an incredibly stacked lobby going into today. But you may be wondering, well, I didn't get involved with this. I, I didn't get to compete to the finals. Don't even sweat it. I got you because guess what? Monday, September 27th, you can sign up for the next Fortnite Trios event. So make sure, go check it out. Enrollment opens then. If you want to compete, this is going to be your chance to do it. So make sure to go check it out uh, right now 
as soon as enrollment opens on Monday, September 27th. But we got to talk about it. We talked about season eight and we talked about the changes in season eight. What also comes with that is map changes. And we got to talk about what we're going to expect here on this map because minor, you already know these corrupted areas are going to play a big role in today's games with the new 30 plus chests at each one of them. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely going to be a spot of contention here amongst these players. It really is. I mean, these are new locations added into Fortnite Season 8. It really switches things up because, of course, we're used to the standard POIs, Believer Beach, Pleasant Park. We're seeing them right here as well. We're seeing the Pleasant Park, Believer Beach uh, area. We're used to those POIs, but we've got some brand new locations with tons of chests, tons of floor loot, and tons of opportunity to get some good loot. But the only downside to these new locations is, of course, you have got big, uh, big POIs just like Misty Meadows. You're seeing a Lazy Lake just outside of these corrupted areas. So we're going to be seeing a lot of teams rotating in there and potentially this could be a pinch point because at these locations, as you know, there aren't too many uh, cover. There's not too much cover. There's not too many buildings. And the only way out is just by building yourself. So will we see some mid game and early game engagements there? We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, I can imagine that we're going to see a lot of engagements going, going on in these areas, especially for the teams rotating through, thinking that maybe they can clean up some loot. But I also see teams that are just going to land there and then end up getting contested through those rotations. So uh, it'll be super interesting to see how it uh, unfolds, but I'm excited. We got to talk a little bit about the rotation going into this game or into these games, I should say, because there are so many new rotational items in the game, like the shadow cubes, for example. If you don't know for those at home, the shadow cubes are located in the corrupted areas and you can actually use them mixed with the pads that are located in those areas to go crazy far across the map and uh it, it definitely makes for an incredible way to rotate what are you looking forward to in today's games I mean, in terms of rotation, we're seeing new slipstream type devices in the games as well. We're seeing these Damn. at the new corrupted areas as well. So you don't necessarily have to use the shadow cubes, or maybe you can use them in conjunction with those split uh, slipstream items, of course, as well. So this is really, really interesting. It really mixes things up in the competitive scene because not only do we have new locations to, to land at and to rotate to, we're also going to be seeing some interesting rotations used by these players today. Uh, used by these players today. It's going to be very, very exciting. Listen, I, I feel like everybody sitting at home. Maybe you're not as hyped as we are. Well, guess what? I'm about to get you hyped. Okay, well, you're definitely hyped now. That's all I got to say. Who wouldn't be hyped after watching that? Because guess what? That's just a little bit of the action we're going to be covering here today in the Play versus Trios High School event featuring Fortnite. So, look, I'm excited. I know Mini Maya is excited. Um, we talked a little bit about the rotation changes, but what do you think of the new sideways locations that uh, are in the game now? Yeah, we have new sideways locations. They're going to switch up the meta as well. Maybe we're going to be seeing some of those new sideways weapons being put into good use mm -hmm. today. Not 100% sure if teams actually like them. Maybe they don't. Uh, me, myself, not too much of a fan at the moment. But we may see some interesting play styles. Maybe it suits some teams. Maybe it doesn't. This is Trio. So there's a lot of opportunities. 15 inventory slots for these teams to have. So maybe we're going to see the usage of things like the Harpoon, of course, as well, that has been re-released this season. You know, one thing I'm super excited to see used in trios is the charge shotgun again. You know, in trios, it plays a massive role to have that, at least in one of your trio members, especially considering if you use it effectively as a team, that is major damage you can take onto other players. So I'm excited to see how these teams are going to be able to use the charge shotgun in this new shotgun meta, because guess what? Pumps still exist. This is the first time we get to see pumps coincide with the charge shotgun and uh, will we see it be used to its full extent? That's the question we want to get answered. But what do you think of the new uh, way to side grade here in this game? Because now it's levers side grading to charge shotguns. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I'm very excited and I can't wait to see what the sort of meta these players are going to be using today. Is it going to be something to do with the charge or are we going to see more levers in action? I can't wait.
I can't wait, and it's already time. Let's dive into game number one of the day. Look at that, that beautiful chest there. Holy as the <laughs> battle bus drops in. We drop in as well with Pam Stu and Tim Team, two different POVs here going into game number one and uh look i'm excited actually to watch what chimp xmb and stacky can do this is a trio that we haven't got to see too much from them as individual players in recent seasons but with the potential that we've seen from them in the past we know that they have what it takes to, to climb the leaderboard another team just like many minor mentioned is pamsu uh thatch and uh mr baby boss himself <laughs> and uh look mm -hmm. That is a team we're going to pay close attention to. But we got to dive into the action because Cold here by himself left in the cold as he tries to take on this engagement. But no, it actually does not work out as he falls early here to the discount Benji. Yeah, discount Benji right there taking out Cold in the middle of a map area, of course, as well. We're seeing this gas station area used by so many trios. There is actually a new little IO guard base right next to it, so it makes it a very viable split drop. Another drop we're seeing used by a lot of trios. Actually, we see two teams here. We're seeing Saiyan, uh, Cody, and Hat Lady right here Lo uh, looting this sort of northern side of Dirty Dogs, just making sure that they've got their loot. And of course, look at Saiyan right here. He looks as though he's got some very, very good loot. He's got that purple compact SMG, so. Will we be seeing some good damage used by that today, or will they decide? So, you know what? Rotate on out, because this is the first game. This is a very, very important, a pivotal moment in these guys' tournaments, because this is a this is, this is the, the first opportunity to prove yourself and to prove your, your rotations in the game. We're seeing Asian Jeff right now, though, getting in a bit of an engagement right by the corrupted area, getting practical as well. He's playing with Shadow 20 right there as well. We're seeing this trio getting some shots on just from this IO guard base. This is a really difficult engagement for them to take. This is, and, and you talked about expectations for players and, and what they're going to be doing here in game number one, and it is actually Asian Jeff who has a lot of high expectations on him as he is one of the play versus veterans here in the scene, uh, known last in the spring season, I should say, for his solo performance, now trying to replicate that same performance here in trios. But with Yansar taking out one of his teammates early, this could be a, a sign of a rough game number one here for Jeff's team. Yeah, they already want to get off to a better start than that. It looks as though Jeff's team have found themselves a llama though there. Shadow and Jeff, I think they're just grabbing that right now. So maybe Yant's team right now may think, okay, if these guys are going to have more mats than us, maybe we don't push this fight, but maybe they do. Maybe they go for those two extra elimination points, of course, each. So four elimination points up for grabs there, but maybe it is a smart decision. Yep, they're going to say, you know what? You guys can have that llama. You guys can have that loot. We're going to rotate on back and get some more loot for ourselves now speaking of loot hydra right now look at this he's got the purple charge shotgun can he put it to good use he does get beamed down to that 51 hp though this is a tough fight for them to take as well looks as though he's on his own as well this is a tough one this is a tough one indeed especially with the way that it was situated and no he ends up going down here the shoney and uh now somerset getting involved here it looks like a, a, a different team actually or no it is shoney's team in somerset and jivy man oh man Ooh. we talked about their performance there in in fcs last season now they are competing at a <laughs> high level again today in somerset uh not pulling any punches to say the least Definitely pulling out some emotes though, which is good to see. I always like to see that from the high level competition. Looks as though there is still one player left. Yeah, it's Reciprocal, who is all the way down at the bottom of that. Sea Bear and Hydra, they've gone down. And Somerset's trio are all alive, healthy, and well. So Reciprocal right now, he needs to try and get his way out of that situation. He doesn't want to get eliminated off spawn early on, as a lot of teams don't want that to happen. Of course, this is not a great situation for him. His loot is not too bad, but GB wants some of that loot for himself. <laughs> Oh dear, getting the AR shots down there as well. Some great tags from GV. Well, something to keep in mind here for Reciprocal, right, is is they can rotate away and hopefully uh, fully disengage here from Somerset's trio and then go back for the cards. Because if you don't know in season eight, there's been some reboot card changes. The reboot card lasts longer on the ground and there are more reboot bands across the entire map. So with these changes in mind, Reciprocal might be able to get his teammate, but now we focus on Dash as Dash is actually going up against Chimp's team. Yeah, we're seeing them rotate on in. I believe these guys do land at Pleasant Park. So this is what I was talking about earlier about these pinch points. I believe XMB's team do land at the sort of corrupted area. So this is what we're talking about, those early and mid-game engagements. XMB there going down to scold his AR shots from the car. Now they think, okay, let's do a quick U-turn. Let's go back to that fight and let's finish it off if they can. As Scolds, Dash, and Davey right now, they need to close on in as quickly as they can before Asian Jeff does get revived now. 
Dash going down his HP, of course, as well. As uh, sorry, HHF XMB going down. And now this is an important engagement for these guys to take now. Asian now XMB and does get revived right there as well. We're seeing Skulls Dash and his trio. They're gonna say, you know what? Let's rotate on out. We got XMB down, but it's not enough. And I think they're just play a little bit safer for this first game right here. Yeah, with the focus on Surge being such a big factor here in this game, they made sure to get their tags, get what they could, and then disengage. And you see them continue to get tags as they rotate further from the fight. But for, for X and B and Chimp's team, they're very, very fortunate that that disengage did take place. Now that the focus is back on Yan's team, as you see him actually getting focused from several different angles. So if he's not careful, they could end up falling victim to uh, this early game engagement, which is the last thing you want to see at this point in the game. Yeah, we're seeing Yan right here. He only has seven of those medium bullets, so this is not the great situation for him right now. Now he is fighting Asian Jeff and his trio. Now one of them is going down. I think it is Asian Jeff nearly going down to the great shots from DC. I think, yes, Taylor going down, of course, as well. And now this is them on the back foot. It's a 2v3, and now it's a 2v2 situation. Asian Jeff and Shadow, they're going to try and close in, close out that elimination, of course, right there on the other player. Now Shadow is going to take some, some damage from behind. Taylor there going down. Shadow getting shot from all angles. This is not a situation that either of these teams want to be in, because of course, if you look at the map, there's another team looking on over. This is crazy. Yeah, this is a lot going on here for, for Jeff and Shadow. Losing 20 early on was already hard enough, but now they have teams just on either side of them just trying to get involved. Now, though, it does look like Jeff's going to be able to disengage, but with only 54 effective HP, he's not going to be able to do much, especially with Yan on his wall. And uh, it looks like he is not letting go Ooh. as Asian Jeff now goes down. Yeah, it was almost inevitable, but now they have to be very, very careful because, of course, we spoke about it. There's another team looming. They're just saying, you know what? This is our domain. We don't want you guys to be fighting here. So maybe they do have to rotate out here a little bit earlier on. You've seen those sort of light blue arrows at the top of this area. This is a really difficult situation for Yant and his trio. They do have the uses of that shell cannon right now, though. And no, GV, Somerset are down as a duo now. It's Johnny going down right there of course as well gv up on height trying to hold this angle and crunchy taking out somerset right there in the elimination feed now it's all up to gv all on his own can he clutch up for his trio oh no this is not a good situation not a good situation whatsoever but it is for crunchy's team as you see him just continually pressuring the last player there and big tags come off but he's not able to clean it up crunchy actually does as i say it the casters curse indeed <laughs> as jivy goes down to dusky but now though it looks like the focus is on as as uh fs is is here with his team but he does lose rx here pretty early on yeah i was seeing Shavi now and his teammate all alone and there he goes it goes down those charge shotguns being put to good use of course as well now Shavi can he clutch up on his own I don't think it's gonna be possible but never say never it could be possible for him we're seeing Pamstow's trio another favorite right here to perform well these guys coming up with these eliminations we spoke about it earlier how good these guys are at fighting together we've seen it again and we will see it right now Fatch picking up that elimination as Pamstow does go down but there's another little bit of pressure from another team just up on the high ground right, now, uh, right there now. Now, Baby Boss, he has to try and build around this build just to make sure they can get that res off on Pamstow. Looks as though they are, and they can get themselves back up to having that good, healthy HP. Speaking of which, Twitch, oh no, he is not looking healthy at all right now. As he gets eliminated right there. Yeah, who was it? It was Prudus taking down Shadow, the final one of the Asian Jeff trio. Yeah, that was tough to watch. I mean, look. We've literally watched non-stop engagements since the moment this game has started. That's just insane to think about. And what's also insane is there's still 76 players remaining. So all that action, and we still have so many players up in this lobby that Storm Surge could still be a very, very big factor here for these teams. Now, though, you see uh, Prudus and his team looking to uh, just begin to rotate. They're, they are pretty far from zone as of right now, so they are going to have to get moving if they want to find a nice little position there in zone now though you see palisty's team looking just taking some shots it does look like they have one player caught off though as palisty takes a big amount of damage that is going to need to disengage now though it is all up to moss by himself does get the shakedown here so he should be able to identify where these other players are but it's all about the way that they work together as a team that is why they were able to walk away uh, victorious here in that engagement 
Yeah, that was so crucial. And a seam right there going down. I believe he was on his own as well. So his trio are elsewhere. Not too sure where they have perched up. But now we're seeing D-Roller and his team perched up on the main building at Lazy Lake. Such a commanding position. Not only to ensure you have that high ground, but of course that mid-game storm surge. We spoke about it just a bit ago, about how important that's going to be for these teams. We're seeing Frisk, Visuals, and D-Roller. These guys are very, very experienced. These guys know exactly how to play in these high-level games now. You can see a lovely map shot right there as well. All the teams rotating on in. There's not too many teams are sort of populating that southern side of the map. So that does seem to be the dead side for this particular zone. And Storm Surge coming up right now. Now D-Roller and his team are above. So they're looking pretty good, but they want to try and get as many more tanks as they can. Yeah, I mean, look, 115 above the damage threshold is good, but it's not as good as it could be for them. They know that they're not necessarily as comfortable as they would like. So that's why you still see them going for these tags because you have to remember just despite being above that threshold you always want to be looking for these tags because later on in the game they're not going to be as easy to get as they are now yeah definitely not you really don't want to be left in a situation where you need that storm surge you have to jump in people's boxes that's definitely what they're going to try and avoid right now as you can see they've gone down to 93 above so with this position they really need to make it work as long as they're in the zone they need to try and get some tags as much as they can they do have plenty of medium bullets of course as well but they do not have any eliminations so maybe that could be why their storm surge threshold is a little bit lower than they would like at their now speaking of high ground wow i say look at who i don't even know who that is is that a team up on the main mountain yeah it's a nerf face right now getting some great tags on the team that are commanding up on height such important tags as well for his team we're seeing him just above the storm surge threshold so he's really clutching up with that burst assault rifle yeah those few tags that he got off onto that team is what's holding them above but now he sees actually uh, the opportunity to take a few more tags but i'm actually surprised by that that team on top of the hill there they're not returning any type of pressure so they're easily getting tagged up by the teams below which is not something you see normally and it is in fact we do have a little bit of a shot there it looks like it is creo uh purrs and informal hanging up on top here this is a team that i personally want to see do well informal well known in the community and uh looking to uh show that he has what it takes to compete at a, a high level here in this play versus event yeah, absolutely. We're seeing Percy using one of the newly uh, released items into Season 8, of course, as well. We're seeing the suppressed assault rifle. Not an item that I would have expected to see too much, but we're seeing him use those. And maybe that is a really, really good effective method to not get heard from other teams because now they can silently take some Storm Search tanks all the way up on that high ground now. Team's looking for some Storm Surge tags on Nerf Ace and his trio right now. If they can try and ensure that they don't get tagged up, and especially not cracked at this stage of the game, it's going to be so crucial because a lot of these teams are going to be looking for that Surge. As you see XMB going down there in the feed. And there it is. We're seeing some new sideways weapons in use. The Mythic Sideways Midian. Yeah, this is going to be a power weapon to say the least, uh, especially looking at who has it. Your face. Uh, and Ecto, that was the team that actually, I believe, took out all or a majority of Chimp's team. So that was the team we were talking about early on, and they have gone down relatively early here in this game. They went down to that team, and it could be potentially because of that minigun. Now that the focus is on Zay Jr., as it uh, looks like they've lost a teammate, and uh, they're just trying to survive here with other teams surrounding the area. Yeah, they're just outside of the zone right now. And look at the loot. It's not too good. It's not favorable loot, but look at the Storm Surge as well. They're 384 above. They can afford to maybe just chill a little bit, not make the plays on other trios, because if other trios spot them as a duo, that could spell the end for them. And now that could be what's about to happen. We're seeing Zay Jr. having to disengage and try and get back to his teammate. They're now together. And I think this team right here needs that Storm Surge. They may have identified that this team are a duo, and they're closing on in to try and take out these players they really don't want to lose this fight it's such an important time in the match of course for them 23 teams are up 68 players remain such an important fight for these guys to not lose more than anything they don't necessarily need to get too much damage off and i believe it is zay jr going down there in the feed now it's a 3v1 matthew having to try and clutch up all on his own with that gold pump shotgun though can he do it? he does some great damage but it's not quite great enough and he goes down that's so unfortunate for them yeah, that is unfortunate to watch, but it looks like uh, that team does end up coming out on top. But now we switch focus over to Paper Pump and Ved. This is, again, that trio that I personally want to see do exceptionally well here in these games. 
and I think they have a lot of potential to do it. Bed and Pump being two of the, the best fraggers in the NA East region, and, and unleashing them on a lobby like this, this could be uh, interesting. Like I mentioned before, 19 eliminations in their winning game in the semifinals, so that's that's huge uh, going into today. But the focus now is on Twist, as Twist, Suscript, and, and Mr. Danny have uh, been struggling a little bit as they begin to get focused by the lobby. Yeah, this is not the situation you want to be in. Of course, a lot of these teams will be looking for as much Storm Surge tax as possible, because although, although they are away from that threshold right now and they don't have to worry about it too much the moving zones the half and half zones is where they're going to have to get as much tanks as they can so danny twists of course suscript as well these guys are going to be having to uh, make their way into zone and use those metal bills as a good protection to make their way in. they're not quite in the next zone though so this is an important time in the match for them how are they going to rotate it it's going to be tough but let's see how they do it yeah i definitely think they have the potential to, to position themselves well they just have to make sure they rotate at the right time the last thing they can afford to do with them being as far away from zone as they are is to get focused. So if they use this smart and they rotate around the outside, they could potentially walk away getting in pretty easily. Now though, you see Palsty uh, actually in ghost form there uh, as he does get tagged up by Pams to his team just a little bit, but fortunately not too much. So he's still gonna be able to rotate. And the nice thing about these new shadow cubes and using them is you can still pick up loot. You still open chests. So that's really nice to see it utilized in this way here in this game because guess what? They were pretty far away from zone. Yeah, they were pretty far away from zone. And what that enables them to do right now is to save that launch pad. Now, a lot of these teams will opt to use the launch pad maybe if the half and half zone is not in their favor or indeed the moving zone. So that's a crucial rotation from Moss and his trio right now because now they're in the zone or maybe just outside but maybe they've got themselves a tarp in this is a really really good position for them and most crucially they've probably saved some materials and of course they've saved the usage of that launch pad now we're hopping on over to pamstow's trio Fash as well as baby boss right now 551 above the storm star threshold five eliminations so far in the match for them wow they're popping off they are actually popping off like that is that is impressive to watch but it's also impressive is the way that these teams have positioned themselves in this zone i'm actually impressed to see like pam su fetch and baby boss over here setting themselves up for success in the zone they knew that it was going to pull in this direction now they're hoping for that first moving zone to pull in their favor as they continue to pressure the rest of the lobby yeah, they're in a really, really good position right now. We're seeing them using these sort of, I believe it's the sort of corrupted area. There's some bills that can't be broken. I think it's part of the mothership from the event in the previous season. So, of course, that can't be broken down, which means they're going to stay up here for as long as they can and as long as they like. We're seeing Davey there as well, taking some shots, and he does go down in formal, taking him out right there. But some really good opportunities for some more Storm Surge for this trio. You think that they need, you think they don't need any. You think they've had enough, but no, they're trying to get as many eliminations with those two points per elimination as possible. So, it's it's great to see them keeping aggressive, which is what Dash and his trio or his duo now scolds. Of course, Davey going down have to do. That's 200 below. This is a tough situation for them. Yeah, this is definitely a tough situation. Dash trying to out heal the Storm Surge and being 208 damage below is significant. It is going to be hard for him to come back from that deficit and make something happen here. But with builds on the other side, there is a chance that, uh, that Mr. Dash here does walk away getting some big damage it does look like his teammates have gone down it does look like they have gone down to surge there too because their reboot cards are not are now available and uh they did not get any hold but no there Ooh. it is storm surge gets the final tag but a team beams him from the distance now dusky crunch and dom rotating forward just trying to get into moving zone because this is going to be a hectic spot here a spot here in lazy lake yeah, it definitely is. A lot of these buildings, they can re-farm. So if they do try and get close to some of these, the more natural builds, then as you can see, there's a lot of them available. So maybe Pamsto and his trio will box up next to this building. Yep, they will. They're going to make sure they can re-farm that to save as many materials as possible. We know from previous tournaments how important that map management really is. The material management for these trios is so important. And now we're seeing the launch pads, the recycling of launch pads being used for some of the later rotators right now. We're seeing the railgun in use as well. Dusky trying to find some shots right there through the metal builds, trying to get as much storm surge as they can. We've seen pump, paper, and bed. Are they on height? I think they are. Yeah, they are on height, and it looks like uh, they have more shotgun ammo than assault rifle ammo here in pump's inventory. <laughs> So this is going to be uh, uh, tough for them to take any kind of range fights, but they do find themselves positioned 
in a pretty decent spot if they want to go for high ground. But no, they're actually going to choose to rotate it potentially early and position themselves a little bit better in zone. If you saw there, they were more or less at the edge, and now they found themselves a little bit closer towards the center. And it does, in fact, look like they are going to go for the high ground here at this point in the game. Yeah, this is such a great position for them. Launch padding to the front side of zone, allowing them to sort of maintain that high ground and then just sort of dominate it, which is which is great to see. Of course, we do have the usage of those those uh, those grapple sort of guns. I mean, what do you call them? I've actually forgotten the name of them. They're called the harpoon. That's what they're called. Uh, we can of course <laughs> use them up on height. There it is. Uh, but yeah, they can of course use those on height. So it's going to allow them to get lots and lots of refreshes. So even more this season, we're going to see teams battling it out for that high ground. We're seeing Crunchy, Dom, and Dusky right now rotating on the right side of zone, trying to save as many materials as they can as they do recycle old builds. Crunchy they're nearly getting in a bit of an engagement, but rotating on in, trying to lead this trio. One of the most experienced IGLs in today's tournaments now. We're seeing Panso, Fetch, and Baby Boss. These guys are on height right now. This is an important situation for them. Can they hold it out, and can they close out the game with some eliminations as well? Yeah, I think they're, that's what they're looking for. They got six eliminations on the board right now. They have a nice high ground spot, and it only looks like maybe one other team are close by in, in a position where they could potentially take high ground. But remember, with launch pads in the game, high ground is not safe until you get to like zone eight, zone nine. So it really, it's really anybody's high ground up until that point. But now we're focusing on here, Veda and Paper by, him, by themselves. Pump has gone down in these final moments. Will they continue? to slay out that's the question yeah paper right there having to give up high i'm sure he won't be too happy about that and he won't be too happy because ved has also been eliminated he's now on his own having to try and get some eliminations and hopefully lead his team to victory going for that refresh of course as well back in the storm has got the usage of that one flopper as well to make sure he can go for a little bit of a storm play only down to about what 40 hp right now in the white hp so not too many materials either gets inside someone's box right now can paper clutch up he can't he gets taken out right there by one of the other players it was tng baby boss right there taking him out who was one of the players on height so can we see these guys clutching up on height or will we see one of the low ground teams preserving those materials and closing it out let's find out yeah, let's find out here it is the final moments the pressure raining from above and also from the mid grounds you see moss's team here uh, doing a really really good job of controlling the fight there at that point in the game but it is Fatch, baby boss and pamsu raining down from above 10 eliminations so far peterbot just trying to rotate innocently <laughs> and unfortunately getting punished by the team above and a team on the same layer Oh no, that's not a good situation for him now. It's a really, really good position for Fatch, Baby Boss, and Pam Stu. Can these guys keep their bills, try and maybe try and go for some refreshes as well? Maybe it could be a time to drop down, destroying that launch pad, of course, as well. They don't want anyone to be going up there. They're saying this is our domain now. This is our high ground, and nobody else shall be taking it off us. As we see Sosprim and his trio dropping a player in, getting some great eliminations on two players on Discount Benji there and his trio. They're getting involved again. There's more. There's more action. They're saying, I want more. I want more eliminations. This is not enough with that gold pump shotgun. I think he can do some great damage. And I think they're going to try and disengage right now because there's only six teams remaining. They want to try and get as many placing points as they can. They've got a little bit split right now, but they're back together, getting beamed there as well from high ground. Such an intense ending right here. Oh, no. This is the final moments, folks. Danny just trying to survive here, and he does end up going down. Another player on the back of his own there ends up taking advantage of him being caught off guard. Suscript now by himself just trying to get out of Storm, Ooh. and Big Tag come off, but it's not enough. He does get the knock, but it does get eliminated at the same time there, and unfortunate for him, but Baby Boss still on the high ground and controlling from above. Now at 12 eliminations as a team, they're doing a very, very good job of controlling the rest of this game. Another, another elimination right there as well for Baby Boss, who is absolutely dominating. Is he gonna go for it again? Top right, that's right, he doesn't though. He goes down now, it's all up to Fatch and Pamsu. Can these guys clutch up on the high ground? There's only one other team left. I believe it is a 3v2 situation, high ground versus low ground. As we see so often, they do have that healing device. So of course, they do have those, those floppers. They do have that chug cannon as well. The heal condition could win them this match. Or do low ground have other ideas? They might not. I think they're gonna go down. Fatch, Hamstu, and Baby Boss, they close out the game in game one with a victory royale going for that heal off. Wow, what a game. Yeah, if I saw that correctly, 14 eliminations and the victory royale. 
That is just absurd. That's 28 elimination points on top of the 57 points for the Victory Royale. I mean, that's a, a clear lead walking away after game number one. An absolute monster first game for Pamstu and his trio dominating that high ground, taking it a lot earlier as well. As we mentioned before, they might lose it, but they managed to keep hold of it and, of course, get those refreshes, those all important refreshes to keep them alive, healthy and well all up there. They had those heal conditions as well. Of course, the Chug Cannon coming into play as we see so often, but what a very commanding first game from those guys. That was insane to watch. And here it is, just another example of why they were able to do what they were able to do. And it actually looked like it was potentially 15 eliminations. Okay, look, I'll find out once that leaderboard is ready to tell you all. But man, did they do a very good job. But before I can get you those leaderboards, we got to jump to a quick break. So stay tuned, grab some popcorn. We'll be right back.
set me free or give me death, yeah. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man, I'm on my way, yeah. Y'all can find out, you on time out. You been dealing with the devil, where you sign at? Yeah. Oh, Lord, you getting financed. Me, I'm talking notice shit, baby, that's where my mind at. Try that, yeah, me, I threw my money down. And you know that it's good, we can skip the run around. And I don't need no yes, man, I'm all the way down. Yo, and I am not for sale, that's a good Welcome back, everybody. And listen, before we left on that break, I said I wanted to know Pam Stowe, Chucky, and Fatch, how many points they had. Well, guess what? I have that update for you. 85 points after game number one with 14 eliminations. A dominant lead to now second place with So Joel and Zuzu with seven eliminations and 66 points. So that is a big jump there. Almost 20 points uh, lead, and that is uh, substantial there, Miner. Yeah, very substantial indeed. Of course, it is only game one. So, of course, if the teams are a little bit lower down, maybe they got eliminated off spawn. There's still plenty of games to come. And, of course, maybe we, maybe can, uh, can get a little comeback going, of course. Maybe get some more eliminations. Maybe change up the game plan, of course, as well. So, I'm really excited to see how Pamstow, Chucky, and Fash uh, perform in the rest of the tournament. But it's a really, really commanding start for them. They couldn't have had a better start. Yeah, I, I got to agree with you. I think uh, one thing we really got to mention is the fact that now that harpoons are back, it's easier to fish in those different uh, regions. And I think they were able to capitalize on that very well. They had two chug cannons, four floppers. Like they were guaranteed to win the heal off. And, and they they genuinely did. The other team had no chance whatsoever in comparison. So uh, with the harpoon back in the game, do you think the chug cannon should still have a place here in season eight? I think it definitely has a place, of course. It provides a really, really interesting new mechanic to the game where it takes up two inventory slots. So you really have to be very, very careful with, you know, how many you take. Maybe you take one per trio, two. Or if you go, try and go a little bit more aggressive or a little bit more, uh, you know, brave, we're taking three. So it definitely does provide teams with a little bit of options and a different sort of heal off to maybe just some floppers or some slurpfish. So I definitely think it still has a place because the teams have to be a little bit smarter about how they do it. And of course, we saw Pamstow, Chucky, and Fats. They performed that excellently and they were very very, very small. Yeah, that they were. They they executed that to perfection. And that's what we want to see in these games because these are high-level games that we're watching here in the Play Versus featuring Fortnite event here. And it's a Trios High School event. These are high school students competing at such a high level. It is genuinely impressive to watch what they can do. Me being uh, not a high school student anymore. Uh, honestly, I couldn't imagine being able to perform at the same level as what we were just able to watch honestly just exciting overall but guess what game number two is almost here we got to talk predictions obviously pam stowe takes game one who do you think is going to take game two I mean, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be very exciting. I originally thought the Pam Stowe's team would do very, very well. So, you know what? I'm going to go for the easy option. I'm going to say they're going to do it again in game two. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it. You know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go a different route. I like the way that Informal's team played the high ground early. They did very well positioning themselves, and they even did get some eliminations there, but they ended up falling a little bit earlier than I expected. So I'm actually going to be rooting here for Informal and Creo's team and, uh, and hoping to see if they can pull something off. I think that's going to be the team we watch closely here going into game number two, and that's going to be my personal prediction. And it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, especially with Amso's team doing so well from the high ground. And from, from what I saw, it didn't look like really anybody attempted to contest him. So it's interesting, especially with launch pads in the game, that they were able to hold it for as long as they did. 
yeah, they have a launch pads, of course, in the game. Nobody contested them. And of course, they had the usage of that harpoon as well, being able to sort of grab up some refresh, some materials, maybe some extra loot, of course, as well. And maybe that is how they got that extra healing items to win them the game in the end. They were only a duo as well. I believe it was uh, Fatch, I think, who uh, did get eliminated. So yeah. uh, was it Chucky? It might have been Chucky who did get eliminated. So they were a duo up on a height. So it was a very, very tense game. It was a very tense end game. And I'm sure we'll get to see more in the, in, in the coming games. Yeah, we should be able to see more of that action. But will high ground be dominant or will we see some low ground teams perform at a, at a high level? I think the, the po possibilities are endless. They really are. It, it doesn't matter what layer you're on at this point. You have the opportunity to walk away with a victory royale. But when you have a team like Pamsto and Fatch and, and, and that team, like they just genuinely knew how to play the high ground extremely effectively. And uh, that's ultimately why they ended up taking home that game. But... It's really all about managing your expectations, understanding what's going to happen going into these games. And uh, really, will you be able to heal off? Will you be able to win with eliminations? Like, it's going to take a lot for a team to really catch up here in game number two. But with five games remaining, there's still so much potential for these teams to come back up the leaderboard. Yeah, there really is. I'm sure they'll be a little bit more streetwise right now. They've had a game to settle in, just to settle the nerves a little bit, know where the teams around them are rotating, how their game plans are going to change, and maybe how their own game plans are going to change, of course, as well. It allowed them to settle down and understand how this tournament is going to be played out to play the final five games to the highest of their ability. And I can't wait to see if maybe we see a bit of a switch up in the leaderboard. Who knows? We could. We could genuinely see a switch up here on the leaderboard. And that's one thing I always like to mention is that in game number one, that's your, your chance to make mistakes and, and break that down and, and make some game plan adjustments moving forward into the rest of the games so that you can be successful. Game one, maybe game two are the only games that I give you that exception. Outside of that, you have to have that game plan on lock. Make sure from game three to game six, you know what you're doing. And uh, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see some game plan changes and uh, will it ultimately make the difference here? Yeah, it really will. We talked about it earlier about how important getting a good start is for the teams that did. They'll be very, very happy. For the teams that maybe didn't, there's still plenty of games to come. And of course, we know about this season. We know how these teams are going to be playing. We know how their rotations are going to go. But this is a really good opportunity for them to change things up, maybe change up a little loot route if they did mess up on a little bit of surge tanks. As we saw a few teams going down earlier, this could be an exciting game for them and hopefully a game for them to turn it around if they are down low. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, look, this is your chance and this is your your opportunity. This is a huge event on the line. You've made it to the finals thus far. Now it is about taking home one of those big prizes we saw early on. And top 15 walk away with a, a piece of the pie. So make sure they are putting in their work and it is, uh, it is time. It is time for game number two. So let's go ahead and dive in to all of the action. Let's get right into it. Game number two. What a tournament this is turning out to be. Just game one has happened. It's only been game one. And already we're seeing some incredible plays, some intense action. And I'm sure we have more to come here. We're hopping on board with our first place team right here. Pamstu, Fatch and his trio, of course, landing at Believer Beach. Definitely a very, very good POI. It looks like they have it uncontested as well. Yeah, it does look like they are going to have it uncontested. And, and with a power POI like Believer Beach, uh, anything goes. And this this kind of makes sense as to why they were able to walk away with that victory royale early on. But some honorable mentions right now in the in the uh, elimination beam. You see Creo getting some eliminations. You see Taylor actually taking out Shadow early. This is uh, definitely an interesting start for these teams as uh, they definitely didn't expect to go down so early. Yeah, I'm sure that's not the best situation for them right now. And also for Zayn and his trio, of course, one of them has gone down. Cody is the only one left. Of course, we're seeing a few fights here at Dirty Dogs. Definitely a very, very good POI for these teams, contested by one other. So it's now a duo versus trio situation. Zayn right here is not looking too good with the loot, of course. Trying to find some good loot from that chest. He does pick up that big shield potion as well if he can now. Maybe just get out of there. He's thinking, okay, we've we've lost a teammate. Whether they have their reboot card or not, I'm not too sure, but I believe that they can just yeah, get their way out of there. They're saying, okay, this is not the game to start getting eliminated off spawn. This is an important game to maybe pull things back for us. Yeah, and they're, and they're one of the teams that are definitely going to have to focus up here and, and make a comeback. And it actually looks like they may end up rotating into Sloan. If you don't know, Sloan is still on the map here in Season 8 and actually has a mythic... Og. 
So definitely a huge power weapon here in season eight. So I'm surprised we didn't see them directly go for it, but it is kind of understanding the uh, lack of effective HP they have on them at this time. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that mythic weapon is put into place in today's tournament. I mean, it's a very, very powerful weapon. 39 damage to the body that weapon does with increased headshot damage, of course, as well. So who's going to get that gun? There's only one on the map. So it's going to be very, very important for these guys to maybe rotate on in there before anyone else if they do want the usage of the only mythic that is currently in the competitive side of Fortnite. We're seeing a Taylor, uh, DC, and Max right here. These guys are looking very, very good up on the high ground. And no! <laughs> No! What's oh. happened, Taylor? What have you done? <laughs> this is the caster's <laughs> curse at its finest. Oh. Taylor dropping from the sky, man. Maybe, maybe you uh, uh, should definitely make some life choices there, Taylor. Man, <laughs> that is that is tough, man. Tough to watch. But now oh. we are watching Crunchy Dom and Dusky just laying in to to RX there. That is tough to watch, and it does look like. It's going to be a quick little uh, trio wipe for them. Crunchy, Dom and Dusky, a trio that knows how to handle these high pressure situations early on. And that's why they effectively took out that trio so early. Yeah, these guys doing pretty well so far. And in game one with 42 points. So definitely not the start they would have dreamed of. But not def definitely not the start that uh, some teams have had in terms of having a bad start. These guys have had a good start. They're pretty much chilling right now. They have those early eliminations taken out a full trio. So not only does that get them those points, it also gets them that storm surge uh, for the later stages of the game. We're seeing some of these teams right now getting a lovely little connection with those AR shots. We're seeing this blue assault rifle used in very, very effective nature right now from this player. Can he get some shots off? We're seeing an engagement just outside of Weeping Woods right now. Who's going to come out on top of this one? You know, Weeping Woods is, a, is definitely a, an interesting spot to take an engagement. There's so much cover, but there's also a lot that could end up blocking you. So if you're not careful, you could end up in a, a compromising position and ultimately falling earlier than you want. But with a team like Kenteku, Palsti, and Moss, they know how to handle these situations. Weeping is almost like a second home for them. And that's why they see we see them doing so well early on here in this engagement. Yeah, I think having that experience of fighting with those trees, you know, of course, they can help you, giving you that cover, of course, as you mentioned. But especially when you're building up like this, they can sometimes get in the way. So they definitely know how to fight here. You said before about how how much they know this area and how well that they know this area. And that's so crucial when you're taking fights at this level of competitive Fortnite. Both teams seem to be alive, healthy, looking pretty, looking pretty good as they're trying to get as many tanks as they can before they do rotate on out. They are in zone, of course, as well. But, of course, the Slurpee Swarm team will be rotating on up, so they have to finish this fight as quickly as they can if they do decide to take it. You know, Ecto in this trio was one of the teams that we watched closely. They ended up falling a little bit earlier than expected. Now they're trying to make that comeback and, and change it up. Now Paper, Ved, Pump fighting together uh, and, and getting some tags off but nothing significant here as they continue to, to aggress Euphopia on the other side there big shots coming through paper not able to take the wall but with the way that this team is pressuring them from every angle it does look like it's not going to last much longer here for Fopi if unless he can get away but looking at the situation bed on top applying pressure big shots coming out you see him take out Foppy now he has been knocked now it's all about healing up, getting ready to go, because the rest of the trio is about to show. Yeah, that was such a great elimination from the team. Of course, Fopi going down. He was very split, and I think Paper, Ved, and Pump, they identified that. As you talked about earlier, they're such good fighters. They're very, very good at identifying when there's a solo player and how quickly they were to jump on that opportunity, getting that player eliminated. And now they have that Storm Surge. They have a little refresh nice and early on, of course, as well, to make sure that they don't have to spend too long farming. And now, will they take that engagement with the other team, or will the other team decide, okay, you know what? You've taken out one of our players. Maybe it's time for us to rotate on out. I think they will do that. They're just going to rotate on out. They'll be happy with that elimination. Yeah, I think that's that's a smart play. Sometimes you just have to give up and, and disengage in, in a fight like that, especially as early as this one is, because you want to make sure you're successfully set up for the late game. The late game is really where you're going to get all your points, especially with the amount of placement points up for grabs. You need to make sure you're making it to that end game if you really want to walk away on top. And that's what Pamsto, Thatch, and Baby Boss here are doing they understand that this is what they need to do. They need to get their tags where they can, but they need to be uh, on top of what they need to do. They don't want to be too aggressive. 
they're they're disciplined they understand that guess what this isn't the time that we need to overextend and be aggressive but we still do need those tags yeah, they really do. And of course, with zero eliminations, it's such an important time for them, especially when they're on the high ground right now, utilizing these sort of broken areas of the mothership from last season to en enable them to get that high ground, but of course, enable them to not get broken down as well. We talked about it earlier in the end game situation. We haven't seen it too much be used in the mid game. So this is a really, really good position for these guys to be in, getting those storm surge tags on the players opposite. As they do seem to be a little bit split, so maybe the team could focus one of these individual players or they just it's quite content i think with getting these these tags nice and early on in the game yeah and these are important tags for them to get but with that sideways zone just popping up there that actually protects them but also provides them some loot that they otherwise may not have had so with the with the new uh sideways mini gun and sideways rifle in the game they, we could see this team walking away with it here but it actually looks like pam so and Fatch may want to get involved here in this zone. If you don't already know, you can't build inside of there. So once you get in, it is all about who's got the better aim. Yeah, it really is. And of course, the team that are inside of here, these guys won't be hearing these guys coming in. But of course, there it is. Pamsto taking out Palestine right there, going down to the elimination feed. So does Konteku goes down. I think they snuck up on him. I think that was the perfectly executed sneak play using the new sideways area. We haven't seen that yet today. And Fatch, Pamsto, and Baby Boss. These guys, they have performed it to perfection right there. That is incredible from them. From our leading trio, showing how good they really are. And taking out players mid-game like this is going to be so crucial to them mounting a an attack on the rest of the lobby, of course, trying to hold out that top spot of the leaderboard. Can they close out this elimination though on Moss? Let's find out. Yeah, that was a good understanding of what to do in that situation, and they do. They wipe the trio. Yet again, we watch them doing so well in the early game, but will they continue that energy through the game? That's what we want to see. That's the question we need answered, because guess what? Game number one went as well as it could have for them. 14 eliminations, victory royale, we saw it. But now in game number two, they got three eliminations and we're only in zone two. So could this be a back-to-back -back with the high point game or could they end up being too aggressive and falling a little early? That could be what they're about to do, but they do get an absolute beam on one of the players opposite right there. That was an incredible 3 2 one style shots from this trio. We're, we're seeing how effective they are at fighting together, but also the team synergy, the, the team chemistry between these three are very, very good. It's very, very good to see them doing that. And I think both of these teams right now, they understand they're not in the zone. They don't necessarily need this fight. Maybe the team that they are engaging with here do because of course these guys have one elimination each these guys are sorted we're seeing exo and his trio now this is the opposite angle as these guys they think you know what yeah let's rotate on out let's use this io car a very quick vehicle four seats of course so plenty of room for all of these guys to get themselves into the zone and yeah they don't have any eliminations so maybe those are the crucial storm surge tanks that they need to get them through this game that could be and, and storm surge is so important we saw the impact it had in match number one now we watch and, and wait to see if it makes that same impact here in match number two. With 82 players remaining, it definitely looks like it could. But for a team like Dash, Davey, and Skold, they are good to go. They do not have to worry about Surge as they find themselves 700 plus damage above the threshold. Wow, that is very impressive from them. We're seeing them perched up on the Risky Reels board right here. Of course, again, this is an item. This is a, an area of the map that cannot be broken down, but a great duo play right here. I think it was Ved who does go for the Harpoon play, and then uh, also, pa uh, sorry, Paper goes for the Harpoon play, and then Ved gets a great shot off on one of the opposing players right now as Pump looks for a different angle, tries to get some AR shots on, of course, as well, as these guys are getting another a massive amount of Storm Surge damage that's going to be so crucial for them in the end game now though they're being the focus for a lot of these teams that are looking for their own storm surge as ved paper and pump they've got to make their way into zone it's closing in yeah it is closing in and it is closing in fast if they are not careful they could find themselves getting caught in a, in a position they definitely don't want to be in the last thing you want to have to deal with is taking shots from a player and storm damage that's why you see them use that pad there quickly disengage from that team Oh, and it does look like Ved actually ends up taking quite a bit of damage. And it's from Yuz. It's from Yuz, Toter, and Fofe. So uh, they, they actually go back and they use the pad. It looks like this engagement is not over, man. 
He really isn't. I mean, look at this team. This this team are 59 below the Storm Surge threshold. So they do need this engagement, but no, <laughs> Yas going down right there as well. Out of the air. This is not a good situation for them because, of course, now, uh, as Zed Coder and, of course, his other teammate have to try and get this revive off. This is a great situation for Pump, Paper, and Ved, though. We saw them trying to get the Storm Surge just a little bit ago. So getting that elimination, getting that damage, it's going to be so crucial for them. Can Paper do some damage with this gold charge shotgun? He's looking for as many angles as well as is Pump, who does get the great Pump. 70 damage right there on the opposing player. I think it's Foppe who does take that shot. And now they're, they are, they're still a full trio. They've got to try and take this, this fight on and try and take them out quickly. Yeah, and it does look like Pump actually does get the elimination out to Foppe. So now it's just one player remaining, and there it is. Paper gets the final elimination there on to uh, that player. And that was a huge turn there because Coder was working was getting away, he was trying to effectively survive, but Paper said, no, 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 I'm not gonna let you get away. Now though, it does look like Saki, Chip, and X and B are, are on the quite opposite end of that as they do get an elimination, but they end up getting pressured here by two teams. Yeah, Saki, a uh, three-time semi uh, or FNCS grand finalist right here. So definitely one of the more experienced players in the lineup today. So will we see that experience being used against some other players in some engagements? Now, speaking of engagements, this is Pamsto, Fatch, and Baby Boss right now. It could be a free elimination right here for Pamsto. It <laughs> is. It's a great elimination from Pamsto, and it just adds to more of their eliminations. Wow. Yeah, wow indeed, but it looks like Stacky and Chimp may want to get involved in this. They know, they should be able to know now that it is, and they actually do. They drop Thatch, they get the, the knock there. That is a huge turn for this team, but Chimp takes a lot of damage as well. Does end up getting the full elimination there onto Pamstu, and now it looks like the rest of their team is going to have to back up. This is a tough spot for our top trio after game number one. Yeah, Pamstu and Fatch right there, both going down, leaving Shucky all alone to try and clutch up this game. That is not what they want, as we talked about earlier. Maybe they'll get a little bit too confident, a little bit too aggressive, and maybe that's what we saw from them right now. But SMB, Jim, Stacky, these guys will reap the rewards from that. Of course, they do have the uses of that Chug Cannon right now as well. Now, yes, this is it. Shucky, Baby Boss, this player right here on his own. They do have eliminations, so they do have some, some rewards from this game. So it's not an absolute nightmare, but... This is going to be tough right now. There's a lot of reboot vans in the zone, but is there any in this one? I think there may be one at the Risky Reels area. Is it an option, though? I don't know. Yeah, this is going to be tough to watch. I, with with Baby Boss by himself, it is Chucky finding himself having to uh, kind of carry on without the rest of his team. This is going to be uh, rough. It's going to be hard to come back. But if anybody's able to have a, sol a high solo impact in a game like this, it's gonna be Chucky. And there it is. We talk about it. And man, oh man, the beam comes out a huge knock onto Zuzu. Now he's just trying to hold on as he begins to get focused. It looks like uh, So is just trying to get with his team. That is actually our first place team versus our second place team. So could we see him continue to press this? That is the question we need answered. Wow, he looks as though he is. He's being very, very aggressive, trying to close out this elimination. He knows that two points per elim elimination is such a big number for this trio, but it's even bigger. What a shot, though, oh, oh, oh. from Baby Boss to Chucky. Gives a great headshot onto So right there. Now these guys are going to get sprayed. This is a good elimination for So and his trio, but it's not so good because they're getting focused from a lot of different angles. A lot of other teams now will have seen that, and they might think this is a really good opportunity for them to get some Storm Surge tanks. But now this is our second place team on the screen. The first place team have been eliminated. They do have only one elimination though, so they're playing it a little bit differently to uh, Pamsto, Chucky, and Fatch, but let's see if they can clutch up this game and maybe try and get into that first place spot. Yeah, and, and looking at the elimination feed, it does look like Ved's uh, Ved has gone down, so uh, that is tough to watch for that trio. They were the, the team that we saw early on being extremely aggressive, but it looks like maybe being too aggressive as it falls, or the, as Bed falls early. Now you see Cedric just looking to take tags up in the air and nothing's gonna connect, but Storm Surge being a factor here in just a few moments. So they are gonna have to continue to press on and get those tags as they can build. Now just gathering some intel, looking around, deciding what's the best way to rotate, but with a team like Peterbot's team close by, 
you have to be careful. Oh, but as we switch over, Ecto is taking some massive tags and getting some knocks here in the distance. Oh, it really is an intense fight for these guys right now. They really don't want to go down, especially at this stage of the game. Still 20 teams remaining, so they definitely want to try and get as many placing points as they can. It looks as though there's that sideways minigun that's applying that pressure, of course. When it does get into that overdrive mode, it can break through those builds, so they've got to be very, very careful. They do have a lot of Storm Surge tanks. Is it going to be enough to last them the whole game? I don't think so, but they can afford now just to be a little bit less aggressive, a little bit more passive, but... It looks though every other player is having other, other ideas about this trio. They're all spraying. Yeah. yeah, the pressure is on. And that's what happens, right? When you're in a when you're in a, a lobby like this and you're not in zone and, and somebody identifies that, you're gonna be the focus of everybody on the other end. If somebody identifies that, it's you that they're gonna be paying close attention to. So you have to be careful. That's why positioning is so important in this game. You have to make sure you are set up for success. And unfortunately, Yusu. Uh, Big Skane and Ecto, they are not set up as successfully as they would like. Yeah, they're not, but luck is on their side. They have pulled the half and half the 50-50 zone, so this is very, very good. On the opposite end of things, though, D-Roller and his trio, they have not pulled the 50-50 zone, so they're going to have to try and figure out a way to rotate in right now amongst all of these other teams. Maybe they have the uses of the launch pad. I think they do, so do they want to use it this early? Maybe they don't. D-Roller right now looking out to try and find a good opportunity to rotate as Peterbot and his trio. These guys need some Storm Surge there. That's why we see them trying to get those tags on players that maybe are a little bit split going into this rotate of course they do have eight seconds right now to make a decision how are we going to rotate this how are we going to play this and how are we going to give ourselves the best chance at winning this game that's the question what's the best way to win this game <laughs> well it's getting in the zone and first and foremost that was a smart timing for peter bot's trio to, to use that launch pad they knew they were going to need to use the launch pad to make their way in but that was the perfect time to do it with so many people in the air it's hard to to get focused in a situation like that so smart on them and uh looking at the elimination feed you actually see chimp and stacky getting some eliminations here but oh no peter's bot team was actually below the threshold there for a second with it being only 69 damage above they're gonna need some more tags yeah, they definitely are. I think that's why that early rotate was so important for them, because now it allows them to focus on teams that are maybe leaving it a little bit later on. So trying to get that Storm Surge tanks, as is Frist, D-Roller, and Visuals. These guys are trying to find some players that are maybe a little bit more shambles, as we see some teams crackly that right there on the right side of the screen, who I think they're going to get focused by a lot of players. It looks like it's only a duo right there as well. Yeah, he does go down crackly right there on the right side of the screen. That's so important for them. Yeah, Larson taking out him. Now D-Roller and his three are in a bit of an engagement. They're going to have to back up a little bit here, I think, because I think Friss, yeah, he does take some, some tanks right there. Does take some damage. Visuals having other ideas, though. He's saying, you know what? I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive, but no. I think he gets pulled back right there. They want to focus on the next rotate. I think they're above on Storm Surge right now, so they're looking good. They don't have any eliminations, but getting those tanks right there was so important for them. That it was. And D-Roller being such a, a well-rounded player, bringing in Frist and visuals too like this is a trio that should be able to do some big things here in this game but it looks like peter boss team deciding to to rotate a little bit later and uh they do get a few more tags but they do still find themselves below the damage threshold they're going to have to get some tags and get them quickly if they want to continue to survive in this game yeah, it doesn't look as though they have the heals either to outheal this Storm Surge. So that with 46 players still remaining, we need 16 players to go down before they are safe. They're 200 below, using the launch pad again to try and get ahead of zone. Or maybe, no, go for height. They've gone for a high play. There we go. Chimp is saying, oh no, guys, what is happening? Lepo, Peterbot, and Pal, these guys have taken height, but they're below on Storm Surge. So this is such an important time for them right now, just to try and look down and try and get as many attacks as they possibly can. This is tense. This is 10th, but this could be the play they need to come back because with them being so much below the damage threshold, they uh, they need all the tags they can get. And what better place to try to get those tags than from the high ground? They successfully secure it, and now it's all about pressuring everyone down below. It does look like they were able to get those tags, and now they find themselves just barely above the damage threshold. So continuing to, to apply this pressure is going to be super important. You see Peterbot finding Crunchy here and, and, and just trying to continue on here and get that elimination. It looks like Peterbot said, you know what? I'm not as worried about height as I am worried about taking out Crunchy. <laughs> 
he really was. I mean, that Storm Surge now has been negated, so players don't have to worry about that. Although they do have to make sure that they're going to be staying healthy, staying alive, and making sure that they don't give up this high ground in particular when looking at Peter Bot's team. They do still have some good material counts, of course. They do have the usage of uh, of the Harpoon, of course, to get them that refresh that they really do need. There is a player back in zone right there, of course, as well. They're dropping down a few layers to ensure that they don't get chopped out by some of the other players, but they have to be very careful. Teams could have the usage of the launch pad to retake that high ground, as we see one already placed there. So let's see if they can hold it out. And it's a great elimination from Peterbot using that purple assault rifle very well there. Yeah, definitely using it as effectively as possible. And that's what you want to see. You have to apply pressure when you have power weapons like the purple assault rifle in hand, ready to go. And uh, it looks like Peterbot, man, it's just aggressive. Big tags coming out there, though. And the shots just continue on. The pressure is relentless here as Peterbot just continues to try and make something happen. The, the eliminations are important. And another big tag there does end up taking the wall, but it looks like another team may be getting involved in the fold so they are going to go back up and secure their high ground you have to be careful you don't want to find yourselves going down for for aggressive plays and then losing the high ground advantage that you worked so hard to get yeah definitely i think that's why they're all getting back together right now up on a high ground we're seeing bed right there going down the elimination feed he was a solo player couldn't quite clutch up but he did very well to get to that place in the game we're seeing peter Bot jumping in it to another player's box not too sure what was going to happen there what was going to go down we're seeing exo and suffer right now these guys at the bottom of the map right down the bottom of the zone as well on the low ground suffer right there going down and exo trying to pick up the pieces can he i don't think he can and he's only down to 20 hp right now can he <laughs> clutch it up but he cannot and what a shot right there from uh, larson yo it's, it's actually surprising to see aviv squisher larson on the low ground and they know how to play the low ground effectively with a, a ton of eliminations 14 eliminations to be exact wow. on the board could we see a replication of the game one energy that we saw or could this be even better with 14 eliminations as of right now that is huge yeah, they have 14 eliminations. They also have the, the heal off devices as well. Those shot cannons are so important. They're getting more eliminations. They're not sticking at 14. They want more and more and more. It's now down to a 3v2 low ground again versus high ground. Is the high ground team going to be able to clutch up a Kalepo all by his own? And now, yes, he does go down. And it's Squish, Larson, and Aviv clutching up on low ground. That was so well played from them. So well played. We talked about it going into the game. We talked about the advantages on high ground, but guess what? We also said that it's anybody's game. It's not just high ground that can make games go their favor. And there we saw it from the low ground, taking that victory royale with 17 eliminations. Wow, 17 eliminations. A lot of teams associate height with getting those eliminations, but we've just seen low ground perform once again, as we have seen in plenty of other tournaments as well. They clutched up so well. They had those heal off uh, potential as well. Of course, they had those chunk cannons. So that was so important for them, allowing them to stay alive and stay healthy down there on low ground. Yeah, they did a really, really good job of using low ground to their advantage. And that's why they ended up walking away with the VR. They, they played it to perfection. And that's exactly what we wanted to see here in game number two. A, a change of pace. Game number one, high ground. Game number two, low ground. Game number three, anybody's guess but before we can get into game number three we're gonna jump into a quick break so go grab a drink we'll be right back Better than the internet. 
is what you've been selling. I ain't into that. We are doing business. This is simple math. I invest. You know I get it back. You believe that? Yeah. They asking what the fame like. Tell them hang tight. Let me holler when the pay right. Put that on my damn life. You know I'm the man, right? Show them what the plan like. But y'all look slow. Don't understand right. Yeah. So tell me how you feel, baby. Cause I've been working all the way up to a meal, baby. Yeah. May know the year how I feel lately. You know the deal, baby. You know the drill. Yeah, I'm on my way. Yeah. I'm on my way. Yeah. Man, I'm on my way. Yeah. And I can do this all day. Man, I'm on my way. Said I'm on my way. Yeah. I'm on my way. Yeah. I'm on my way. Yeah. And I can do this all day. Man, I'm on my way. Said I'm on my way. You can set me free or give me death. Yeah. You can set me free or give me death. Yeah. Shout out all my enemies. All the best. You can set me free or give me death. Man, I'm on my way. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man. I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way, yeah. Man, I'm on my way, yeah. And I can do this all day, man. I'm on my way, said I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way, yeah. And I can do this all day, man. I'm on my way, said I'm on my way.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Play Versus featuring Fortnite Trio High School event. My name is Life of Panda. Joining me again is Mini Miner, and we have brought you the action from game number one and two. And now it is time for game number three. Like, I mean, just insanity taking place here in these two games. And what we thought was a, a surefire leaderboard after game one has completely changed after game number two. Yeah, the scoring system right now showing how much it affects these players. The consistency from Larson, Aviv, and Squish Trio. Man, these guys averaging second place. They came the third in game number one. And game number two closing out an incredible 17 elimination victory out, putting them in the top spot. That consistency is what's got them at the top spot. But we're seeing some a variety of different play styles. We're seeing Pamstow's trio with an average placement of 11 right there. So you're seeing them get a lot more eliminations. It's a a very very close leaderboard of course but we're gonna see who uh, who comes out on top in game number three i mean what is that 42 point lead from first to second place like yeah. that is just insanity but guess what we still have more games to go we have game three four five and six so there's still tons of opportunities for these teams to come back and that's what we want to see here in these final moments we we love seeing these shifts in the leaderboard because guess what there are so many talented players in this event that anything goes at this point yeah it really does i mean seeing a massive lead like that could be a little bit daunting to some of the players but they really shouldn't be alarmed there's still four more games to go there's still plenty of elimination points up for grabs and of course that all important placement points so it's definitely not done and dusted yet there's still plenty of games to come and i'm sure we'll see some great plays leading up into the final few games yeah i definitely think we will but one thing we haven't seen too much of, at least in the end game, is the new sideways weapons. I was looking forward to seeing some more uses. What do, do you think we're going to see them make any kind of impact in these later games, especially as we dive into game number three here? I mean, potentially, this is, of course, one of the first tournaments of Season 8, so a lot of these teams might still be getting used to these new sideways weapons, how they're going to function in competitive Fortnite. So will we see some teams be a little bit more brave now, if, especially if they're lower down on the leaderboard, maybe take some items that they're not too familiar with and try and push the boat out a little bit, going into game number three right here. It's going to be exciting. It is going to be exciting. And, and looking at Larson's team coming off that victory royale and, and landing at uh, one of these split drops, these IO bases, is really, really interesting to see because they had a lot of success in game number two out of this POI. Will they be able to replicate that in game number three? Yeah, I think having an uncontested POI is so important. We saw it with Pamstow's trio having a Believer Beach uncontested, which is, of course, a very, very power POI. A lot of loot there and, of course, a lot of weapon spawns as well. So these guys are going to have this POI also themselves, even though it's a little bit of a smaller one. It's definitely a good drop now. We're seeing another one of these uh, engagements taking place over on the other side of the map. We're seeing Squish, Aviv and Larson back on board with them. Just looting their way up, ensuring that they do have the good loot. And look, they do. The purple pump shotgun for, for Squish right now. This can do some damage. Yeah, and I got to I gotta do a quick shout out to Asian Jeff. If you saw in the elimination feed, actually ended up taking out the team that was initially contesting them. So that was Taylor and team. So uh, this is a turn of events because Asian Jeff's team did fall early in game number two. So they're looking to make a comeback here in game number three. Now that the focus is on Sunny and his trio in Misty Meadows, this is a a tough POI to, to have engagements in because there is so much cover for people to hide in. It's hard to tell where people are at all times. Yeah, and I think we're seeing that in action right now. One of the trios are jumping on Sonny almost as if he's a solo right now. Yeah, it's Storms and his trio who is now down to one HP, but he does pick up the elimination on the user player right there. Now it's all down to the one solo and Sonny cannot quite clutch up for his trio. They do go down to revise Storms and Brew, the kings of Misty Meadows at the moment. Yeah, that is so unlucky for them, but lucky for Revised Storms and Brew as they, they walk away with Misty Meadows having everything that Misty offers. And it is quite a bit, a bit now that they've added this corrupted area. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do here with all of the potential that Misty in this corrupted area has to provide for them. 
Yeah, it looks as though they have the corrupted areas to themselves as well. They do have to be very careful, of course, with teams rotating on in. But not only do they get the rewards of winning uh, at off spawn at Misty Meadows, they get all that loot. They also get the, the floor loot and the chests that are available at these corrupted areas, as well as the rotates as well. So they can leave it a little bit later to rotate on in here if they don't want to take those mid-game engagements, which, of course, they don't need now that they've got those early game engagements. Now, look at this. We're seeing some engagements happen all the way over at Weeping Woods in this sort of underground bunker area. We're seeing these two players trying to jump inside of this player's box. If he can get the elimination, who was it? I think it was... Uh... Was Con uh, yeah, Connect here, right? Going down in the elimination feed. He was caught out as a solo. And now we're seeing the shakedown where they might be able to pick up the other two players. Yeah, Konteku does end up going down, but it looks like uh, Ecto's team is pretty split. So uh, that was a risky fight for them to take, but it, it ended up working out in their favor regardless. Now, though, Crunchy, Dom, and Dusky uh, looking to get involved here, too. They understand the importance of getting some early game eliminations, and that's what we see them trying to do here, but not without getting a little bit of punishment in return. Crunchy does get tagged up 120 effective Ooh. HP, and no, as I say that, it's a huge knock onto those players, and there it is. It is all over for that trio as they take them out with ease. Yeah, such an important early game engagement for crunchy and his trio again getting that storm surge out of the way and now they get to reap the rewards of the loot from their eliminations we're seeing the build fire right there looks as though it went up quite high of course the limited materials that you get off spawn may have played a, a, a role in that we're seeing gb somerset and co right now having this engagement we saw it early we saw them fighting just outside of this flush factory area those hills and the flush factory buildings sort of meet in a really intense high ground fight as it's Seabear's trio that are attacking them right now. Yeah, if you don't know, Somerset and Jivy's team, they actually split between the, the Hydro Dam as well as the the um, Flush Factory area. So that is their full split. So what Seabear's team has done is identify that that's what their split is and try to rotate on top of them before they can fully complete that, that loot process. So. It's really smart and effective for Hydra and Sea Bears team, but unfortunate for, for Somerset, Jivy, and company. Yeah, it's unfortunate for them. And this is what I was talking about earlier about the streetwise nature of these players. They're going to try and figure out where these teams are going to be rotating. Okay, maybe there's a team that have split drop over there. We can rotate on in there a little bit earlier and take one of them out. But this is what we're seeing right now. Sea Bear and his trio being very, very smart, very, very patient with this engagement as well. We're seeing GV and his trio all the way down on low ground, trying to play, trying to stay as silent as they can, as it looks as though Somerset has been eliminated. It's now Duo versus Trio. GV Trio versus Hydra's Trio right now. And Hydra getting some great shots off on GV. As now they're only a duo. Can they fight this one out? Can they win the engagement? They're definitely trying. Shoni and Jivy, they, they, they understand what they have to do to survive. They're playing this super smart. You see them playing it passive. They said, you know what? Hydra and company will have to move at some point. They can't continue to fight here. We have floppers, so if we need to go and heal off in the storm, we can. But as I say it, Sony gets in the box, big tags off onto the other player, and just tries to, to quickly eliminate him. But no, he actually does end up slipping away. And as I say that, gets into the box. Hydra goes down. Now it is up to Sea Bear and his other teammate to try and make something happen as Shoni and Jimmy survive. Yeah, it's a 2v2 situation now, an ideal situation for Sony and a GV right now, but not anymore because they have gone down Seabear and Reciprocal right now, trying to get some shots off, which they, do, which they do very, very effectively. And they come out on top in that engagement once again. That is actually a huge win for Seabear's team because they now get those, those crucial floppers in the inventory before the end game. Now it's all about trying to reboot your teammate and get a, a chug cannon, and you could easily solidify yourself to heal off. Yeah, this is really, really good for them. Of course, one of their players did go down. We saw Hydra going down in the elimination feed. So, of course, they do have plenty of time to get those reboot cards and maybe get him rebooted. But we're seeing Power Ooh. 3 right now going down. And look at the emotes. They're coming out. I always like to see it. It's good to see these guys having some fun. And why would you not have fun when you've just eliminated a trio? That is contesting you at your drop spot. He's got that compact SMG, the old version of that compact SMG as well. So, I mean, this is a very, very good situation for them because they've got the extra loot. They've got those extra mats and quite crucial they've got that storm surge as well yeah they definitely got what they needed out of that engagement and they're able to continue playing out this game 
that is a risky play, but they honestly identified that they were the stronger team in that fight and quickly took it and walked away winning that engagement. Now, though, we see people like Bla uh, Bailout trying to, to identify what's going on in Boney Burbs, take some tags, do what he can to survive. But when you got teams like XMB, Chimp, and Stacky right outside, you should be worried because these players know what they're doing. Yeah, they really do. They know their rotation. They know their drop spots so well. We see often at Boney Burbs as a sort of location, a real hotspot for fights, especially in the mid-game stages of the game. We're seeing teams rotate out from Believer Beach, Pleasant Park, the new corrupted areas, all sort of funnel into this Boney Burbs area. So that's why we're seeing so many of these players and teams rotating on through here and possibly trying to get themselves their Storm Surge tags as well. We're seeing Chimp, XMB, and Stacky, these guys rotating on in. Trying to avoid as many shots as they can from the likes of Scrub right here. This guy getting some great shots off on uh, the other players. If he can, now it's Jim. Trying to get some tags off the zone. The car is low HP though. They need to hop out as soon as they can. And they do unfortunately get hit. I believe that's 50 damage to each of those guys. Yeah, see that's risky there for Chimp to stay in the vehicle. Knowing good and well that... The vehicle didn't have much health remaining. And now that the builds are on fire, they need to be extra careful once they begin to rotate out. The last thing they need to do is take more unnecessary damage as a result of the vehicle. Now, though, you see Peterbot actually looks like trying to go up behind. Is that Pam Sue's team? And uh, try to make something happen. Yeah, he is. He looks as though he's sort of doing it alone as well. He's a lone wolf in this as uh, his teammates are a little bit further back. He does have a usage, of course, of that automatic sniper rifle now i haven't seen too many players taking this it is sort of the replacement of course we don't have snipers traditional bolt action snipers inside of fortnite season 8 so it'd be interesting to see how well he can use this new weapon or newly unvaulted weapon in the game i mean can he get some tags off could it be crucial for storm surge this is gonna be interesting you know not a lot of people know this but in misty meadows you can actually get a bolt action sniper rifle but it'll cost you quite a bit of gold wow. however it, it, it's something that I haven't seen used at all whatsoever. Watched multiple preparation games leading up to this event, and no one was using it. So with that being said, it, it could still be a very unknown secret, but we could see players later in the season picking that up. Because remember, this isn't the last trios event that Play Versus is hosting. On Monday, September 27th, enrollment opens for the next event, so if you didn't get a chance to compete in this one, make sure to go sign up for the next one. Yeah, definitely. You could be seeing yourself on this big stage, just like we're seeing D-Roller Visuals and Frist on the big stage. Finals format sat in a bush right now, trying to get themselves as many tags as they can, because, of course, they do have zero eliminations. Loot, on the other hand, looking very, very good. He does have the usage of that purple pump shotgun, of course, Frist right now. Maybe his teammate's loot is looking very good as well. They do have a launch pad, and now we're seeing Peterbot, the ever-aggressive Peterbot, jumping inside of people's boxes, and they need to be aggressive. They are a little bit below, but now they've got themselves above. 260 above. This is a good opportunity for them to disengage as Peterbot does take a big shot going into his white H uh, HP right there now. His teammates dropping him to make it. This is a tough situation for them because they have got those tanks, but now they're facing the consequences of getting sprayed and focused by a lot of different teams. Yeah, that they are. They, they have to be careful, especially where they've been positioned. They're positioned between what looks like three to four teams. So if they're not careful, they can easily get focused by what would seem like the lobby here. And that's the last thing that Peterbot and company want to deal with. Just like what Crunchy is now dealing with as he's taken a ton of a damage, but now just quickly tries to heal back up. Yeah, these guys fifth going into this third game of the tournament. So they really are in a good situation if they can make themselves get out of this fight as quickly as possible because they have the potential to take over the leaderboard and take over that first place. And Bed jumping in a box right now, getting a beautiful elimination, a big damage pump shot, followed up by some cleanly effective assault rifle shots. And yet, it is a Dusky, Crunchy, and Dom all going down in the elimination feed right there. Paper, Ved, and Pump pick up the pieces and pick up that loot that they've just earned from that great engagement. Yeah, I mean, if you looked at the elimination feed, each one of them took out an individual within the trio. So that is that is what we talk about when it comes to teamwork. They evenly distributed themselves effectively against that other trio and walked away with those six elimination points. Now, though, you see Peter Bot's team close to Zayt Jr.'s team. So could this be an engagement in the making? 
or will we see them just focus on gathering intel and uh, trying to figure out what's going to be next for them in this game? Yeah, we saw them trying to hop into some heals boxes earlier on, so maybe they're just playing a little bit more carefully now. They don't want to waste those heals, and of course, it looks as though, yeah, it's uh, so going down in a lot of HP right there. I think he's only down to about 30 or 40 HP, so popping that med kit to try and make his way back up in terms of HP, but their HP is being depleted by the ever-looming Storm Surge. 26 damage below for this team right now. They want to try and get involved. They want to try and get as much damage as they can, and not only do they want to, they need to. This is, this is important. This is very important. Uh, fortunate for them, though, Storm Surge is no longer affecting them in this game at this point. However, they still took a lot of damage that they didn't need to take. Now, I get it. I'm an Itchjarian fan as much as the next guy. But uh, you need to make sure you're watching out for Storm Surge, paying close attention to what's going on. Because Zuzu and So cannot afford to take or lose any more of the heals that they have in their inventory. Yeah, of course, it's very, very difficult to get those refreshes without getting eliminations, so they don't want to waste those heals too early on. If they can't heal themselves back up, they put some of the disadvantage when trying to go for those refreshes later on in the game. We're seeing Coda's Trio right now rotating, using a car, trying to get as central as they can, it seems, or maybe even getting onto the less congested side of zone. Yeah, they're going to try and box up next to this. It's a small brick hut that they can use to refarm their materials as being we're seeing informal trio just boxing up quite close to them next to the water maybe that could be a good rotation strategy for them as creo and pers make their way back inside of their box and they're all together which is looking good quite central in the zone as well almost guaranteeing them a placement in the next zone and that's what you want to see positioning yourself at this point in zone three and zone four is so much more important than getting the eliminations but as creo just found out you also have to get those tags and you have to be careful who you're attempting to get those tags from because Ved Pump and Paper, a team like that, they're not going to let you get away with it. They're not going to let you just open up and try to take shots at them. No, they will punish you for it. Yeah, they're really not. And of course, they do have the usage of that automatic sniper rifle. Spoke about it a little bit earlier on and we saw the damage. We saw its effectiveness right there in taking out some of that player's HP. And uh, Informer right now trying to look as much around as he can, see if he can find any options, any rotations, planning ahead, making sure that his trio are all aware as to what is happening and maybe try and look for some eliminations, of course, to try and add to their points. Tally so right there, using this purple assault rifle very well, connecting with some great shots, of course, as well, and they can pretty freely rotate on foot right here over this bridge area. Yeah, I mean, look, this is what they, they need, right? They needed to find structures that were already existing and, and try to rotate around that because when you're not in zone, the last thing you want to do is rotate in an open area because you will easily get focused by the players that already position themselves where they need to be. Now, though, Visual is actually trying to take some shots there off onto Peter, but nothing's really going to connect. But this engagement does not look like it's going to end here as Peter Bot is still just looking for the opportunity to get a shot off whenever he can. Yeah, we know how aggressive Peter Bot is. We saw it earlier trying to get as much Storm Surge as he could. It looks as though Visual's using this... Uh... Yeah, he's trying to break that vending machine. He was using it as cover for a little bit, but wasn't quite working. We're seeing the opposite angle right now. Peter Bot trying to find a, an angle to try and shoot at. Maybe he will take that. Well, he does. Gets the edit on as well. If he can try and get some shots in. Try and get that Storm Surge, of course, as well. If they can take out a player, that could be a really good early to, to late game refresh for them right now. Not connecting with any of those assault rifle shots, but he does, of course, have the usage of that purple pump. We know how good he is at these box fighting situations, and hopefully he can prove it to him and us and his team right now he does have that one elimination so he needs to try and get some more not only for that loot of course they do need a bit of a refresh but also to ensure that they don't have to worry about the storm surge and worry about their loot going into the end game yeah i mean they definitely have the power weapons to take this engagement and be successful it's just a matter of beat playing it smart the last thing you want to do is uh take this fight in, in a way that could find yourself dropping earlier than you want to the last thing you want to do is fall short, especially with 67 players and 22 teams remaining. That would mean you don't walk away with any placement points. Yeah, these guys are actually in second going into game at number three as well. So maybe that's why we're not seeing them take this engagement, despite the fact they might need to in just a moment. They're only five above, so maybe they're trying to play a little bit more passively. They don't want to make any big mistakes or, of course, any risky fights. They don't want to take as many as they can. And there we go. They're above 270 above the Storm Surge threshold now. But they're not backing off. They're saying, OK, we're in second place for a reason right now going into game number three. So 
Let's find out if we can get these eliminations and maybe get themselves a refresh. But how? Going down on the HP right there as well. Getting cracked and going down to 70 white HP now. We're seeing them disengage. We've done seen them do this so well. So they're very, very good at getting back together and getting themselves back healed up to take this engagement once more, maybe. So one thing I, I noticed in that fight is, is they were actually attempting to use pre-edits. And this is what I think personally is going to be a huge meta change in Season 8. I think we're going to see a lot of teams try to effectively use pre-edits in their engagements to, to catch the other players off guard. Fortunately for that other team, they identified what Peterbot and company were doing, and they quickly acted to make sure they got the shots on them that they needed to to back them up. Yeah, using those new strategies, getting those pre-edits done. Spraying a wall, of course. One person holds the wall and makes a big gap for his other two players to, to get some shots off, of course, as we're seeing D-Roller just with visuals right now. It looks as though they've lost Frist in some previous engagements, potentially, and their material count is not looking too good either. The Storm Surge looking good, though. They're looking pretty good on this situation, but the loot, oh no. Gray, gray, gray is all I'm seeing for D-Roller right now. Gray pump and a gray assault rifle. He'll want better loot than this, and maybe he's going to look at some better options. Looks like Peter, Peter Bot right now Ooh. getting some eliminations as well, using that power pump so effectively. And I think they're going to try and go for that refresh despite the pressure from all these other angles. Yeah, they're doing a really, really good job of managing the pressure from these other teams and still getting a couple eliminations in the process. Now, though, it's actually our game one winners in Baby Boss and Thatch. Pamsto has gone down, and it looks like he's just continuing to aggress this player by himself. But he identifies that a launch pad is close by, and he's going to use it. He needs to make sure that he's playing with Thatch. Otherwise, he could find himself falling earlier than he'd like. Yeah, that's very true. I just saw Peter Ball in the elimination feed taking out Aviv. That's second place, taking out one of our first place trio members. So what a moment for the competition that is. This is going to give them a boost of confidence going into this endgame. Of course, they do have those power weapons. We talked about it earlier with those purple assault rifles, as well as those purple pumps. Plenty of ammo to go along with it as well. With 18, 17 players now remaining, they're going to fancy their chances here at closing out this game. Now, look at this. It's a team on height. There's a lot of teams on low ground. It's going to be interesting to see who's going to be able to hold that high ground. But it's not all that matters, of course, as we found out in game number two. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. And with as many top 10 teams that are still up in this game, this leaderboard is not solidified whatsoever. We're almost at the halfway point, and I still cannot tell you who I think is going to win definitively because these players are doing so well to survive in these late games and perform at a high level. You see Ved, Ved's team down low. You see Suscript and company up top. Will they be able to hold the high ground? Like All these questions are things that I need answered here, and we're only in zone six. Yeah, this is great for them. Having this early high ground is a really good opportunity to get some Storm Surge attacks. Of course, if they can launch to the front side of zone, that will be great for them. It looks as though they are about to do that. We're seeing Pump Paper and Ved trying to hold some uh, players and teams that are rotating in at the backside of the zone as everyone is recycling those launch pads, of course. Such a great rotation method, but you have to time it well. Otherwise, you will get beamed by some of the players up on high and even down below. We're seeing Suscript and his trio retaining that high ground and staying up on top. Yeah, and they're doing a really, really good job to maintain the high ground. You saw how they launched early. They identified that the high ground was still free on the other side, and they took it. And they did it effectively. Now, though, it's about continually applying pressure to the players down low. Because guess what? If you don't apply enough pressure to this second height team, they could easily just come up and take that high ground from you. Yeah, especially with the uses of launch pads. Now we're seeing Peter Bot and his trio. I must say, actually, duo. It looks as though Pal has gone down. Peter Bot does have the ability to use this launch pad, though, if he does want to get him and Lepo into the zone. Of course, trying to find some shots at the backside of the zone as well now. Peter Bot does use that launch pad. We're seeing Flash as well, trying to get as many eliminations as he can. And we're seeing the fight team, Sustra's team, looking at everyone down below, trying to get as many shots and angles as they possibly can. As we're seeing Peterbot absolutely fragging out at the bottom of the, the zone right now. He, he takes out Yoss right there, going down in the elimination feed. Does get the full finish on him as well. Looking at five eliminations for Peterbot alone right now. He's really popping off. He's doing an exceptional job of keeping his team involved in this, even despite Pal going down. So with five eliminations on the board, he is looking for more. And it's impressive to see because he does have that Chuck Cannon in hand. He could just wait 
still closer to the end game to try to maybe potentially walk away with the heal off. But no, he says, you know what? I'm not going out like that. I'm going to keep, keep fighting. I'm going to keep being aggressive and I'm going to get more eliminations. Yeah, speaking of eliminations though, Danny and his trio not looking too good on those. Quite contrary to Peterbot, who is now a solo down on the low ground. We're seeing two options here. We're seeing high ground on the bottom and low ground on the top. And Peterbot clutch up as a solo. We've seen him do this so often. We've seen how good he is at fighting as solo play. And it's very, a very, very smart player. So he knows that he just wants to try and clutch up as many place and points as possible and get as big of a slice of those 57 points as he possibly can. Yeah, listen, and he's doing a good job of just, of just maintaining some semblance of control there on the low ground. But with players like Danny applying that pressure from above, it's going to be hard for him to maintain what's going on here. You see him just continually not giving up. He's just uh, applying pressure after pressure. No builds in the inventory, and he's still going for shots. Oh. Big shot on the visual, but no, it's not going to be enough as he ends up dropping there in the final moments. But Danny says, you know what? We're still in the high ground. We're still applying pressure. We're still controlling the remainder of this game. As now you see Squisher and company uh, go down as well. Now it's up to 20. Shadow Asian Jeff versus Danny and company. Yeah, it's a 3v3 situation again. Low ground versus high ground. We've seen 20 use that mythic assault rifle as well. Now, can they make their way up? It looks as though they're making their way up to the high ground. Who's going to come out on top? It looks as though 20 is going down. And there we go, down in the storm, sir. Uh, down in the storm right there as Twist goes down as well as Danny. The high ground team get knocked. And 20 Shadow and Asian Jeff come out in, on top in game number three. Wow, that was incredible. The crazy thing is we literally talked about earlier in this game how Asian Jeff and company, they won their off spawn engagement. Will they be able to capitalize on that? And well, they did. They walk away with the victory royale. They walk away with eliminations. And that is some major turnaround points for them. But until we find out what's going on with the leaderboard, we got to look at some of the gameplay from what happened in that game. And it was just action upon action there in game number three. Yeah, it was non-stop action. Asia Jeff, of course, winning the off-spawn fight. And now they're really a team to contend with, of course. They've shown what they can do when they do win off-spawn. And they can perform at the highest level. And winning that game just shows that. I mean, they did so well to play that low ground, getting those bills up and uh, in front of them, just making sure they have that real estate to keep control of the situation. And, of course, high ground had no other option other than to drop. So very well played from them. Very well played indeed. But guess what? It is time for a quick break. So again, now's your chance. Go grab a drink. We'll be right back in just a few.
set me free or give me death, yeah. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man, I'm on my way, yeah. You can find out, you on time out. You been dealing with the devil, where you sign at? Yeah, oh Lord, you getting financed. Me and Welcome back, everybody, to the Play Versus High School Series East Finals Trios event featuring Fortnite, Panda here, Mini Miner here. We're hanging out. We are halfway through now these games, and uh, they have not disappointed whatsoever. Yeah, they really haven't. I mean, we've seen some really, really variety of strategies going into place right now. We're seeing Season 8 Fortnite competitive action all coming into play. And we're seeing some really, really interesting strategies made by teams on both low ground and high ground. We've seen both have success in both low ground and high ground. And I mean, that last game, that was incredible. It was. It was genuinely a, a huge comeback for Asian Jeff and company. That is a huge uh, shout out to them because going into that game, I believe they were in 32nd. So a big turn of events, like we talked about, they were having some struggles off spawn. They weren't winning that engagement. But in game number three, they walked away, not only winning the engagement off spawn, but the victory royale. So that is what you want to see in a game like this, because guess what? Anything goes. 57 points for a victory royale. Like that, that can turn around somebody's uh, somebody's tournament. Yeah, the format really played into their hands right there, of course, getting some eliminations as well. But of course, it does reward that consistency. And that's what we've been seeing from Larson, Aviv, and Squish. These guys have had such an incredibly consistent day today so far. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing very well. They've had a third, a first, and a third. They've done so good so far. And that consistency is what's really keeping them at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, it's impressive. You, you Like you said, third, first, third. Like, that is as consistent as consistency goes. And that's why, if I'm not mistaken, they're at 223 points. That is a massive amount of points to be at this this far into the tournament. And I don't think anybody is even remotely close. I think it's like a 50, potentially a 60 point difference. So we'll get those uh, official scores later on. But look, going into game number four, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about all of the stuff that we want to see here like i said before we haven't really seen too much from the sideways weapons uh we did get to see a little bit of action there with the new uh semi-auto sniper rifle but uh here it is 20 asian jeff and shadow fighting off spawn yet again Yep, fighting off spawn. Of course, they weren't too successful in these engagements in game number one and number two. But what they've proved is when they can win this off spawn fight, they can do some incredible things in the end game. And maybe that's why they're a little bit more patient right now. I don't think they're going to be pushing over too early on. But I think it looks as though Discount Benji and his trio are pushing over. It looks like, yeah, the assault player right now is on the back foot. Royals, they're getting crackly down in the elimination feed. I think it is a 3v1 situation. Oh no, this player right now, he's all alone inside of this tiny little IO base area next to this uh, gas station, as we can see. And I think it's gonna be surely an easy elimination for these guys. And yep, Discount Benji gets a great elimination there to add to his one already. We're seeing the, uh, the emotes coming out. We're seeing the laugh it up emote, but that's a really, really good opportunity for these guys to, to get a really, really good game in here. You know, if I'm actually not mistaken, I don't think Asian Jeff's team was contested this time around. Yeah. So this could this could be a, a big turn in the tournament for them if they can keep it and maintain it uh, with without any issues. But that's the question: Will they be able to maintain it? Because it looks like there's multiple teams in Misty Meadows now, and uh, these teams are struggling just to to survive here in these final moments. 
Yeah, we're seeing the battle of Misty Meadows. All out war once again. We're seeing it. It's Storms. It's Brew. It's Revised. These guys are all looking very healthy and well. Is that going to last, though? Because, of course, he does get a great shot off on the user player right now. White Hat, Sunny, and user still up, but not anymore. User goes down. Sunny goes down. White Hat has to do it all on his home. All he has is this not the greatest loadout and no materials to his name as well. He's got the lever. He's got the clutch potential. Does it? Is it going to happen? <laughs> is it going to happen? It's not. It's not. It's White Hat going down. Revise, Brew, and Storms. The Battle of Misty Meadows is heating up game after game. Yeah, look, like we said before, Misty Meadows is not an easy place to take these early game engagements. So uh, if, if you find yourself low on material and stuff, you could end up falling just like we see Skold here uh, end up falling as well. Now, all the builds on fire, just Dash trying to, to make up for what's going on here. And it does look like another team in the distance potentially trying to apply some pressure. Now though, Davey does get involved here with Dash and uh, does have the vehicle close by. So if they do need to disengage, they have the opportunity to do so. Now though, Zaxi actually just says, you know what, our builds are on fire. I only had wood building out there, so I'm gonna have to make something happen. But it's gonna be tough as the remainder of the team is very, very weak. Davey now though, taking a ton of damage and actually ends up going down to hate. So now it looks like Hates and Zavi are going to have the advantage in this engagement. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, they do close out that engagement very, very well, getting themselves those eliminations. And this is great for them. This is that early game engagement. We saw it happen with Asian Jeff's trio in the last game. Winning these off-spawn fights is so important. It allows you to have a really, really good finish to the game. And as we see, Pump, Paper, Ved, we've talked about them so much today. How good they are at fighting together. And once again, they are proving it. Going for the Harpoon play right there as well. Pump, 75 damage on the other player. Brings him over. He's like, get over here. I want to have you in my box now, in my domain. Main. And that's what he can do when the players are in there. Great one pump from pump right there, using that harpoon so effectively to close the gap. Like I said, man, pump and ved, they are two extremely good fighters in Fortnite. So to see them be able to just run through a trio like that is impressive. They know how to handle those fights and they handle them extremely well. Now, though, it is the story that we've been watching game over game. It is Hydra, Sea Bear, and Reciprocal going up against Jivy, uh, Somerset, and company. So who will end up walking out on top as Hydra takes a ton of damage? Yeah, we saw Somerset's trio actually going down here in the previous game, but they're putting up a bit more of a fight right now. Seba, Hydra, and Reciprocal. These guys are on the back foot now. Of course, Hydra having to heal his way back up to that full HP if he can. We're seeing Elite, GV, and Shonyi down at the bottom right now. Somerset just a few layers above. Maybe looking to scout out, try and get some information about where these other players are. Of course, we're seeing this fight happen all the time at the... At the uh, the area that we're in right now, the Flush Factory area, right down at the bottom of the map. Of course, not too many teams will be rotating on in here. Potential for the Misty Meadows team to rotate on in, but I don't think that's their strategy. So we're going to see how this fight is going to go down. Looks as though GV is on his own. See their Hydra Reciprocal. These guys, we've seen them fight so well, especially against this trio that they are fighting, the GV Somerset and Co. trio right now. Seabear trying to find as many angles as he can with this Grey Pump shotgun. Doesn't hit too hard, but he can find some angles. He's going to be able to do some great damage. Yeah, and, and looking, he does get a nice little window at it, but not without taking some damage himself. He needs to be careful. He cannot overextend when his team is not as close as they need to be. But with Jivy, Somerset, and Shonyi, they're playing this together, and they're playing it very smart. Despite Jivy taking a little bit of damage, they know how to play this and, and try to survive here, which is what they're going to need if they want to continue to try and climb the leaderboard. Yeah, this fight is dragging out a lot longer than it has done in some of the previous games, which is good. It shows that these guys are really, really used to fighting against each other. Of course, Somerset's trio not having the best of days so far, but I think they can they can learn from their mistakes. They can learn to stay in the same box, stay a little bit together, especially when you have the loot that GV does with that gray pump shotgun. He's not looking too good on the loose side of things. The material count is not looking too great either, as Shawnee tries to get his way up, but he can't. He gets tagged. This is not good for them right now. This is important. Can they clutch up despite having less HP? Yeah, and that's what they're going to need to do here. Shonyi having to, to be on the back foot, heal up, and continue to try to take this fight at a distance. Now the storm is here. So just another factor involved in who's going to win this engagement. You see Shonyi just trying to back up, trying to get away from this player as quickly as possible. 
but uh, it does not look like it's working out. Sea Bear actually about to go down with one HP, and uh, he does. So now it's up to Hydra and Reciprocal to survive. Yeah, it looks as though Hydra right there did take out Somerset. GV does take out Sea Bear in the storm, of course. Now it's up to GV and Shonyi to try and clutch up if they can. This is a very, very difficult situation for them. Of course, they are down on oh, HP oh. and they are down. Sean Yi is down, it's all up to GV. A 3v, or a, sorry, a 2v1 situation. Seabear, of course, does go down in the storm. They're trying to get the revive off if they can, but is this an opportunity for GV to maybe try and find an angle? He does try and take that wall, which he doesn't, unfortunately, for him. He gets boxed and yeah, that mm. is unfortunately the outcome for him right there. Yeah, th at this point in the game, or at, at this point in the games, I should say, you really need to identify that, guess what? This off-spawn uh, plan is not working. It's not working out in our favor. We have to accept defeat here and try to find a different rotation or a different POI, or maybe you have to fight together and not use Flush Factory, because it always seems to, to happen where the engagement starts at Flush Factory. So if they decide to rotate away from Flush sooner, maybe they can make the drop work but as of right now it's not working out for him yeah it's not it's always that dilemma of whether you change your drop spot this state at this stage of the tournament of course is now pumped right there getting a great elimination on uh that player right there we're seeing ved go down as well it's now pump and paper on their own it's a 2v2 situation these guys can try and clutch up. It looks as though it's a third party trying to engage with them as well as paper using that blue sh pump shotgun if he can very effectively gets the loot as well, of course. All important launch pads. It is, yeah, it's Trent and Monkey right now. These guys, they really need to try and clutch up for their downed trio, mate. Of course, they have got one elimination. I believe that was on Ved. So I think these guys are looking good. They might just disengage this. They've had their Storm Surge. They have the, the heals. They have the materials. So maybe they just think, okay, let's disengage. Look, I'm going to say this. If I know Paper and Pump, they're not going to let this slide. They're going to continue <laughs> to, to take this fight for as long as they can until they are the victors of this engagement. So that's why you see Paper here. Uh, looks like potentially getting pressured from above. Decides to continue to play next to Pump. This is a really good way to play this fight. You kind of have to box fight sometimes, especially early game. You don't have the materials uh, that you can box or... Um, build fight with so you kind of have to just work around the boxes that are already existing which they're doing a really good job of yeah they really are and of course we're seeing that mythic burst assault rifle in use we haven't seen it too much today we talked about it earlier of course being able to eliminate dr sloan getting that in your inventory the high damage the high fire rate that that thing offers is going to be so crucial and it looks as though they do they do disengage from this fight i think they're more than aware that they have got that uh, three eliminations right now so they have got that storm surge maybe they've got their teammates uh vent reboot card and they can rotate on into to the, the risky reels area to potentially get themselves a reboot option as we have got plenty more reboot cards or reboot vans inside of fortnite this season yeah which is gonna make it interesting the, I, I believe they they added i'm not the sure of the exact number but i believe there's a, about 40 reboot vans in the game now i mean like there's just a, an excessive amount so it's really nice for these players that end up losing a teammate early there's still so much potential for them to pick them up instead of just having to worry about going to a named boi but talking about another change of the season it is the railgun in competitive and we see how effective it is as frisk gets that 170 damage shot off onto to glico Wow, what a shot from Frisk right now up on this high ground looking down below. That shot could prove absolutely vital to their Storm Surge situation. Now, they're 645 above, so plenty above for now, but who knows how long that's going to last. Who knows if that's going to last into moving zones for this team right now. He does have a good amount of heavy ammo, of course, with the, the vaulting of snipers and all the, the, I guess you could say the semi-vaulting of snipers. You can still get them out of vending machines, but um, there's not too much heavy bullets around on the map, so he's going to have to be a little bit more careful with that just make sure he uh, he saves his ammo as much as he can as well as d roller right now trying to get as many tags as he can on top of this spire sort of location just north of pleasant park that's where the zone is pulling a very northern hole for the zone might be useful for some might be beneficial to others who knows who knows indeed but guess what peter bot pal and glippo they're still alive and they're all extremely healthy 
So if they're going to take this fight, there is a good odd or a good chance that they walk away as the victors of the engagement. Now, though, you see Peterbot still just trying to get some tags off in the distance. You know this team lands craggy cliffs. Peterbot is well known for his uh, desire to land craggy cliffs. So fortunate for them, they haven't had to rotate too far. So this could be a game or a comeback game here for this trio if they play it correctly. Yeah, of course, we've seen Peter Bot be very, very aggressive in previous games, so maybe they might want to tone that down a little bit. Of course, we're going into the latter stages of the tournament. We have we're sort of at the halfway point now, you know, with three with three games played, going into the end game of game number four. We're going to be seeing how many of these teams can utilize what they already know going into this end game, and especially with loot like this for Peter Bot. Even with zero eliminations, they still managed to get some incredible loot. The powerful pump shotgun, as well as that blue assault rifle. They're looking really good. And as we talked about earlier, those floppers. Yeah, and if, I, if I'm not mistaken, going into this game, Peterbot's team was actually in second. So wow. they, there's still some potential for them to have a big turnaround game. But they identify that they need a big elimination game as well if they want to make that happen. That's why we see them being as aggressive as they have been thus far. Unfortunately, nothing has been successful up until this point, but there's still a lot of game to play. Yeah, there is. And for Blue plays right now, he is all alone on his own in the storm without too many healing devices, but he's below the storm surge. Not only are both of his teammates down and out, he's below the storm surge threshold, and that's what he's trying to do right now. He's trying to get as many tags as he can to stay above that threshold. He's got some bandages to use, but he's not going to get to use them because Trentman and his trio, they've identified that there's a solo in the storm, and that right there is a free elimination. And he was so close to turning that around there with the damage threshold. He got some big tags off onto him, but uh, it wasn't enough. But Storm Surge no longer being a factor here in zone number three, but can still play a vital role in how these games play out later on. Crunchy, Dusky, Dom identifying that. So they know they don't have any eliminations on the board. They're going to need the tags. You see Crunchy looking off in the distance, trying to get something dusky as well. And, and they're doing a really good job of controlling the area that they're in. They're, they're not playing in one box. They're, they're spreading out, controlling the real estate in that area. And I think that's why we're going to see them have a really good game here in game number four. Yeah, controlling those areas, having control of big areas of the map is going to be so important, especially when you get down to the sort of latter stages of this end game. Having that peace control, being able to edit quickly on someone is going to be so important. So they're controlling the area very well. And as is Peterbot and his trio, we see them getting some tags as well as Dom's trio, Dusky and Crunchy. These guys perform very, very well in these end games. Crunchy, of course, eye gelling this trio, making sure that they're in the right position. And as you talked about, they're controlling this area really well. And they do seem to have this, this chest nearby. I'm not too sure if they're going to open that, but it might lead to their elimination. We'll have to wait and see. We're seeing Yuz, Pope, and uh, Koda right now. These guys are gliding on in untouched, which is really good. Yeah, it's honestly impressive uh, for them to be able to make their way in and not have to worry about getting tagged up too much. Like, that's pretty solid. Now, though, as I say that, they end up oh. get the focus <laughs> and immediately knock as the teams all around just begin to pressure Pope just trying to survive 38 HP in his dream. Fortunately for him, though, he is going to have the uh, the necessary heals to, to get refreshed and, and uh, get back in a position that they can survive a little bit longer here with Coder. Uh, so if, if he plays this effectively, there's still some points to be had for this team. But it is just sad to see Yuz go down yet again. Yeah, very sad indeed. Unfortunate for them. That is the danger of landing near nearby other players. Of course, you're going to get a lot of people looking at you as you just landed. Of course, your builds aren't too strong. They've just been built. They're very weak. They're very easy to spray through. As we're seeing Seabear feel the full effects of that right now. His builds are not very strong and neither is his HP. He goes down. Reciprocal and Hydra are the only ones left in this trio right now. They're looking pretty good. Though. I'm sure they'll be able to rotate their way and maybe try and get some clutch moments as a duo is Bo and his trio right now trying to get their way into zone of course as well they're not in the safe zone so maybe they're going to try and use their launch pad or maybe try and find another way to get in here yeah they, they are going to have to figure out something because they're just not in zone and there are so many players already established on the edge that they have to rotate through especially teams like informal creo they, they know they're going to have to start moving. And actually, if you saw there, one of the sideways areas opened up on two separate teams. So Ooh. that could be a, a troublesome event if they are not careful because all those builds could be for naught. 
Wow, the sideways area opening up in an endgame. Look at that. We're seeing it right now. There's no builds in this area. A very, very different situation to what we're used to seeing in an endgame. There's no builds. There are cube monsters that are roaming the area. And uh, it looks as though nobody has decided to go in there. It does offer some protection, but of course, you do not get that protection of using your own build materials. So we're seeing Frisk Visual Zero Alert making a really good on-foot rotate. Rotating sort of on the dead side of this zone. Rotating all the way around as they are they're able to do that they're above the storm surge i think tags up a little bit right there though but that was a really really good rotate from them that it was and, and with that railgun in hand they know that they can get the tags necessary to stay above the damage threshold we saw that big shot earlier coming out of the railgun and i and i genuinely believe we're going to see some more of those come out of d-roller visuals and frisk because this is a team that knows how to get those tags and stay above the storm surge threshold they're, they know effective plays. They know how to identify when to take shots. And that's why we've been seeing them really unscathed as far as the Storm Surge goes. Yeah, of course, that rail gun being able to break through builds as well. We've seen them do it a little bit so far as well. They're trying to you know, maybe use that to their advantage and maybe sort of set up a 3-2-1 there. They're, they're all working together to utilize the build breaking ability of that rail gun. Not too much ammo, in it, of course, in that, but we're seeing a lot of these players up towards the the sort of southern side of the map or of the zone right now all the way up on the island there is maybe one or two teams just on that uh, flopper under the zone does pull that way so all of these teams that are on the sort of southern side of this zone have to rotate their way in will they use a launch pad maybe the car could be in play of course as well but now they're below on storm surge fane and his trio they're in trouble here you know for fane i would be trying to take shots Stop building it and let them come <laughs> towards you. Get All you need is one tag, only 11 damage below the threshold, and you stop losing out on the heals that you so desperately need to hold on to in the later parts of this game. And there, again, another opportunity to take a shot. Does it take the shot as they continue to attempt to out-heal the Storm Surge? But now they find themselves 14 damage above, but it's not going to be enough. If something changes, we could see them losing out uh, yet again on some desperately needed heals in this game. Yeah, maybe that's why they're sort of rotating a little bit earlier on using that launch pad. Now they'll be able to look back, try and get some beams on some players rotating in, as is Shadow, Jeff, and Twenty. This trio, of course, winning the previous game. These guys are going to want to try and replicate that up on high ground right now. An early high ground take. Saw it, uh, we saw it done by one of the teams earlier. Maybe it was Donnie's team, who took Kite really, really well, really early on, and they kept it. Now let's see if uh, Shadow and Jeff and 20. Let's see if these guys can replicate that. They do have the usage of that harpoon, so they can get some refreshes here and maybe hold this high ground for the entire endgame. It would be impressive if they can continue to hold this because looking at what they have in their inventory, they are very limited when it comes to ammo. You see seven shots remaining in the assault rifle there for Jeff, 36 remaining there for 20. They're desperately going to need a refresh if they want to attempt to even take and hold high ground. So they're, they're going to be looking for that. And I think uh, knowing this team, they may just have to resort to the low ground. Yeah, well, we saw them play that so well last game, especially towards the latter stages of that end game. They really, really commanded that. The low ground kings in that previous game. So maybe Trentman, uh, Box by Monkey, and uh, Ketsy right here. Let's see if these guys might be having a bit of a a bit of a trouble on low ground if uh, Asia Jeff's team do decide on dropping it down to their preferred and their winning formula, which is low ground for them. We're seeing a lot of teams battling out for height. Yeah, and it's Lepo who does now retake that high ground. Wow. And it looks like it's actually potentially three different trios attempting to hold high ground, but it, it's kind of uh, interesting because I only see Gleppo up there, so I don't see Peter Bot, right? I don't see his other teammate. I don't see them trying to, to hold that together, but uh, they, they are definitely going to have to do something, and I doubt that you're going to be able to hold high ground as a solo. Now, though, D-Roller getting together with his teammates they, they find themselves above the damage threshold, so Storm Surge is not really a factor for them. So you see them just focusing on getting ahead of zone. This is a really nice position to be in at this point because once you're ahead of zone, you have the opportunity to look back, take shots at the people in the area, and get those so desperately needed eliminations. 
Absolutely, and Gleppo does need those desperately needed eliminations himself right now. He is on high. He's a solo, though. His teammates are no longer in the game. He has some decent materials to try and hold it for as long as he can. And he does have the usage of that harpoon as well as being above Storm Surge. So maybe we could be seeing a, a solo high ground victory royale here. It would be very impressive. As we see Ved, Pump, and Paper on the opposite side of things, all the way down on low ground. And Gleppo, he wants it. He's keeping it right now. It is actually impressive how long he has kept it as a solo player. But if D-Roller identifies, and yes, he does, that it's a solo, they are immediately going to take it. And now it is just a change of pace here on the high ground as D-Roller and company have now taken it. Yeah, they have the D-Roller going down in the elimination feed right there. I wonder what's happening right there. We're seeing Pump going down to Fain in the elimination feed as well. As Frist right there going down. Shadow and Jeff's trio lighting up the elimination feed just a little bit earlier on, of course, as well. Now, Paper and Ved, they are alone as a duo. Pump does go down. Ved goes down in the storm as well. Now, Paper, can he clutch up all on his own? Looks like he has two shotguns, drops one. Drops the worst blue pump shotgun right there as Larson gets involved right here and it looks as though he does go down that right there. That was so close. That was close, but unfortunately it does go down there. Squisher needed to be in, but it's not going to be enough as he goes down to Storm Chimp going down there as well. He does get a, a, a knock there onto Squisher, but it's not going to be enough before he ends up completely going down. Now though, Crunchy. And Dom looking to hold high ground. But as I say that, Dom ends up going down to Suscript. So now Crunchy by himself, it seems to be the tale of solo players Ooh. as he does fortunately get that elimination onto Suscript. Now Crunchy looking at his inventory. This could be a heal off potential game for him, especially considering he's a solo player. He has every advantage at this point, but will he be able to hold it? That's the question. It is the question indeed. He's got those win conditions. He's got those heal or potential items. Now he's trying to hold it as a solo. It looks as though there is three individual players left. Two things the 2v1 situation. Crunchy does take one out. Now he's on his own up on high ground. Will he go for the heal off or will he try and take out the other player all on his own? What an elimination on Brew right there. Is he going to win this? It, it really could be his game to win. He just needs to make sure that he plays this effectively. There it is. Big tag onto the final player. It is Revise versus Crunchy. Crunchy has the heal off advantage, but Revise still wants to try and get some shots off. Revise one HP in a dream there in the distance. If Crunchy even so breathes on him, he will end up going down. And as oh. I say it, he goes out to fall damage and Crunchy gets the victory royale. Crunchy right there, a solo up on a high ground. What a way to end it. I mean, I did say we might see a solo clutch on high ground. I didn't think it'd be from Crunchy right there. That was very well yeah. played, though. Used those heals very effectively, got those eliminations, and held high ground with limited materials very well. It did a very, very good job of playing that game out. I mean, from start to finish, Crunchy knew that they had that win potential with the heal off and with four floppers and the chug cannon going into the final game was probably pretty confident as a solo player yeah crunchy right there i mean we talk about crunchy doing so well that high ground the solos on high ground was the story of that game we saw so many teams trying to go up for it trying to take it and it looks as though the high ground has won in this situation a really great elimination to make it a 1v1 in the end right there as well from Crunchy as we're seeing some highlights from this game, which again has brought non-stop action. We're seeing Sonus Tree get eliminations, of course, as well as Larson popping off as he does. Now, it's going to be exciting to see what that changes in the leaderboard. Yeah, and Asian Jeff's trio as well, surviving really late into that game, but it is Crunchy that walks away, not only getting, uh, what, seven, eight eliminations there? also walks away with that victory royale so a huge game for them going into game number five but before we can get to game number five is we're gonna take a quick break so make sure to stay tuned we'll be back in just a few Set me free or give me death yeah living good i've been blessed yeah shout out all my enemies all the best you can set me free or give me death man i'm on my way yeah you can find out you on time out you've been dealing with the devil where you sign at yeah oh lord you getting financed me i'm talking ownership baby that's what my mind at try that yeah me i threw my money down and you know that it's good we could skip the run around and i don't need no yes man i'm all the way down yo and i am not for sale that's in case you couldn't tell but you're no better now yeah. You can set me free or give me death, yeah. Uh, living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man, I'm on my way, yeah. 
I'm on my way. Man, I'm on my way. And I can do this all day, man, I'm on my way. Said I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. And I can do this all day, man, I'm on my way. Said I'm on my way. Real life better than the internet. Keep what you've been selling, I ain't into that. We're doing business, this is simple math. I invest, you know I get it back, you believe that? Yeah. They asking what the fame like, tell them hang tight. Let me holler when the pay right, put that on my damn life. You know I'm the man, right? Show them what the plan like, but y'all look slow, don't understand right. Yeah, so tell me how you feel, baby. Cause I've been working all the way up to a meal, baby. Yeah, man of the year, how I feel lately. You know the deal, baby. You know the drill, yeah, I'm on my way. Yeah. I'm on my way, man. I'm on my way, and I can do this all day, man. I'm on my way, said I'm on my way. I'm on my way, I'm on my way, and I can do this all day, man. I'm on my way, said I'm on my way. You can set me free or give me death, yeah. You can set me free or give me death, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man. I'm on my way. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man. I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way, yeah. Man, I'm on my way, yeah. And I can do this all day, man. I'm on my way, said I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way. Welcome back, everybody, to the Play versus East High School Series Trios event featuring Fortnite. It's Panda. It's Mini Miner. We're bringing you all the action, and we are getting ready for game number five. But, man, oh, man, we can't get ready for game number five without talking about game number four and that clutch performance in the final moments there from the high ground for Crunchy. Yeah, Crunchy is solo up on a high. I think most crucially about that performance and that clutch right there was he had those heal off, uh, potentially had the items, he had the floppers, he had that uh, that slurp cannon as well. So he had the potential that he could play the game as he wanted. He could, it wasn't an intense clutch where he needed to get a few pump shots off. It was very, very calm. He had it under control. And I think that shows very, very good experience and very, very good talent right there. Yeah, and with the elevation changes there and that stealthy in game, he had the high ground, so he had the elevation advantages. And we even see, saw one one or two players get caught out by Storm and ultimately found themselves in a 1v1 situation in the final moments. But it was Crunch walking away, not only having the heal off potential, but not even having to use it because 
the other player dies to fall damage. So, look, getting eliminated there, that, that is tough to watch, especially to fall damage. But it happens. It it takes place. It's okay. But for Crunch, big shout out with that solo clutch. And that's the performance you want to see. And that's the performance that you need to continue to climb up the leaderboard. Yeah, it's those solo clutches, as we saw from Crunchy. I mean, he just knows how to play that so well. He, I think he IGLs the trio as well, so he has a very, very good understanding of the game. He knows what's going on as we see the standings right here. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's have a look. And it looks like Larson uh, and Aviv, this team is still holding on. They have been so consistent from start to finish. Uh, they just know what they need to do. And now I will say in that game, they had the lowest placement out of all their games, right? It was 10th place. So it was still a great place, a decent placement game for them. But going from third place, first place, third place, and then to 10th place, it is definitely a change. It is definitely a change. They're not able to keep up that high level of consistency that they have shown in the first three games, but they still managed to pick up seven eliminations in that previous game, which of course allows them to make sure that they're holding on to that top spot as much as they can. What are they? 59 points ahead of Suscript and Co right now. So I'm sure they'll be pretty happy with that, but there's still two more games to play. It is definitely not over. It's definitely not over whatsoever, especially for a team like Asian Jeff that in two games found themselves climbing up to eighth place. So that is a big turnaround there for Jeff and company. So will they be able to keep that going? Will that momentum continue to go in their favor? Or could we see a shift? Could they be caught off guard on their, their early game? Could we see more contestion in the drop? Could we see a shift in drops? That's what we're going to find out here in game number five and six, because that is the last two games, the final moments for these teams to come out on top and to really cause a shift in this leaderboard. But looking at it now, it's going to be hard to beat Aviv and company as they hold a dominant lead in first place. It really will. I mean, these guys have been so, so, so consistent. A third, first, and a third, and a tenth. So they've been so, so consistent. If they can just keep that same level of consistency for these pre uh, these last two games, I'm sure they'll be happy, and I'm sure they'll be keeping hold of that uh, top spot right there. We saw Asian Jester, of course, as well. Those guys had a bit of a bad first two games, but they managed to clutch up in that previous game, and, of course, getting that victory royale in Game 3. It shows it's all to play for, and things can change very quickly. Yeah, I mean, look, things can change, but this is the final moments to make those changes happen. And there it is. The battle bus is underway. Players are dropping left and right into their respective POYs. And Dom, Crunchy, and Duskybot are going. It looks like uh, in, in in the Weeping Woods area, potentially going down closer to Slurpy Swamp. This is going to be a, a good uh, POY change or, or setup for them, I should say especially considering there are two other teams fighting in that Hydro Dam split. Yeah, I think they're going to be brimming with confidence right now. This trio, of course, coming off the back of a victory royale. I'm sure they'll be very, very happy with that, feeling confident. But of course, they want to keep their emotions in check and make sure that they don't make any silly plays and you know mess up their, their strategy that's got them this far. Of course, we're seeing Dusky right now utilizing this boat, claiming this entire south side of the... I believe it's Sludgy Swamp area, actually. I think they changed the name. So Sludgy Swamp... Um, area down at the bottom of the map. Plenty of loot here as well. There's only 10 chests uh, that spawn at the Sludgy Swamp area. So, of course, getting that extended loot pool, getting that extended path to get your loot is so important for this tree and maybe why we saw them pop off in that previous game. Yeah, I mean, look, they know how to handle these situations. They know how, how to play out these engagements. They've done it effectively. But in Dirty Docks, this is another one of those POIs that you find yourself a little bit more open and can be tough to, to take early game engagements in, especially with the lack of material that you can find here in Dirty. While there is material to take, it is very difficult to get when there's another team contesting it with you. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of metal at Dirty Docks, of course, but you don't get to farm it that quickly. It is a bit of a slower material to farm up at Dirty Docks. You don't get too much of it. Uh, as we're seeing, these teams fighting off spawn in almost, I believe, every single game. I don't think there's been many games where we've seen one rotate on out. So Bill's in his trio right now. He's going to be rotating on back, trying to get as many tanks as they can, using the newly unvaulted into Season 8, the, uh, the, the Burst Assault Rifle. Seeing some really great damage output with that, and maybe even rotating on over to the Sloan's uh, uh, the uh, the mythic versus uh, assault rifle as well as we're seeing these guys maybe rotating on over to the southern side of dirty dogs there is a brand new ruined area down there as well so maybe they'll be able to pick up some extra loot right there we're seeing skulls in a bit of an engagement right now i believe it's a 3v1 and he goes down right there Jeez. 
Yeah, and it looks out. It looks like it's bailout player and company taking them out fairly quickly here in Pleasant Park. I mean, look, that's the last thing you want to have to deal with, especially considering you weren't in zone. It looks like that zone's gonna pull further south, so they're gonna have to start moving. Fortunately for them, though, they're gonna get to move with six elimination points on the board. Yeah, that's huge for them. We talked about how important elimination points are, but not only that, they've also now got Pleasant Park uncontested for now. They, you know, there may be some teams rotating on over from those sort of arena areas that we see over the other side of Pleasant Park, the sort of western side of the area. So they do have to keep a close eye on those teams that are landing there. Of course, I believe it's uh, those XMB Stria that land over on that side of the map. So maybe we'll be seeing those guys rotating on over in a moment, but this guy's looking very, very good. Be able to control their POI and have some uh, have some loot to go along with it. Oh, it's the battle of the uh, southern side of the map area. And I believe actually, we've sort of gone a little bit northern right here. That it does. And it looks like Reciprocal, Sea Bear, and Hydra are on the opposite end of the engagement we've seen so many times here as Somerset and company do seem to be winning. They do. They were able to take out Sea Bear and Hydra, but Reciprocal looking to take shots when possible. And there it is. If he's not, oh! It, as I say that, big tag on to Reciprocal tries to get in, but no, it's not going to be enough. As Shoney takes him out and quickly gets the the turnaround of events for that trio v trio engagement there and that split. That is it. That is exactly what they needed here. It may be a little too late. But there's still some potential for them to turn it all around here in the final moments of this game. Yeah, that's going to do wonders for the vibes in the trio as well. They're going to be really, really happy with that, of course. Maybe they're a little bit more, you know, happy fighting at that Hydro 16 area as opposed to the the uh, the area that we saw, the Flush Factory fights we saw. I think every single time we saw them fighting there. And now we're hopping back on over towards the Dirty Docks area as Dev right here using the ability to hop into the shadow and using one of those sort of launching devices to get himself all the way over here to the northern side of the Dirty Dogs area. Now, can he clutch up for his trio? He's a solo or on his own. No eliminations for anyone in this trio and no materials really to his name either. Yeah, Dev potentially does have the reboot cards, knows that he was able to get away from what was going on there in Dirty Dogs. But will it be enough? Like you said, could uh, that reboot van come in handy and, and bring this trio back to life? Or will Dev be, be partaking in the rest of this game by themselves? Either way, we're excited to see how this continues to go out. But looking at the elimination feed, it's actually Pamsu that ends up going down relatively early. Yeah, very, very difficult situation for those guys, of course, going into this Game number five, they're actually in 13th place, so they're not quite having the finish that they would have hoped for to try and move their way up the leaderboard. We're looking at some of these players right now for his visuals and his trio D roller rotating on over. Now this could be a bit of an engagement just to the east of the Corny Crops area. This is Asian Jeff's trio right there as well, who's rotated on down. We could be seeing two, maybe three or four trios getting involved in this engagement. We saw visuals for and D-Roller rotating into the end game, having the usage of that, that railgun last game. But unfortunately for them, this time, I don't believe they have it. This is a really, really good opportunity for them to get some tags off, which they do. And 20 there, going down to so low HP. Yeah, and, and with how split they are, this is dangerous for Asian Jeff and company. They need to get closer together because with the way that they're set up right now, they're not in a good spot to make some things happen. Shadow on the high ground. Jeff midway through and 20 damaged up trying to survive and heal up here but they're deciding to return some punishment towards frisk visuals and d-roller yeah frisk visuals d-roller of course no eliminations to their name so far maybe jeff and his trio had their drops for uncon maybe they want it off spawn we're not too sure about that right now but it looks as though they're trying to get as many tags as they can so maybe once again they had it uncon which to, to, to me seems like it works in their favor you know when they get that off spawn control so maybe we could be seeing another great game from both jeff's trio and Fris trio right here as they're trying to refarm as many mats as possible yeah they definitely got the tags they needed to for surge here early on now it's just about disengaging and, and keep playing your game sometimes that's how it is you get your tags you're comfortable with where you're at now just rotate and find a good position in zone because that's going to be way more important at this point in the game than anything else but Looking at the elimination feed, it is lighting up as pump and paper are just getting elimination after elimination. 
Yep, we've seen them do it so often. You talked about how good Pump and Ved are at working together, and in and the entire trio, of course, at working together, getting eliminations, and using their teamwork skills effectively. As we've seen Peter Bot, Pal, and Gleppo, this trio, uh, very much likewise. These guys are very, very good at fighting, and they often seem to have very, very good loot. We're seeing Peter Bot right here with the purple Pump shotgun. I'm sure his teammates are looking great as well with the loot side of things. We're seeing Moss right now taking some fire from below at the Sludgy Swamp area. This is what we talked about. This area could be a little bit congested if people are making their rotates. Now Moss going down to 70 HP, going down fully right now to the big uh, scheme right there, coming in with the clutch. Can they close out this fight though? This is going to be so important. Palestine right there getting down on Ecto right there. Now they do go <laughs> down though. And it's Ecto's trio that do come out on top in that fight down at Sludgy Swamp. It is so risky to be taking fights so far into the storm, but it worked out for for her, <laughs> Skane and Ecto, <laughs> as Ecto is actually looks like he's going to be able to get picked up here in the storm, and they're not too far away, so they should be able to make a comeback here in this game. Yep, this is really good. Utilizing that reboot potential really well right here. We're hopping on board with Jeff and his trio. And yeah, it looks as though they did have their draw score uncontested. Might be why they're trying to go for a little bit more risky Storm Surge tanks. They're using this IO-based card to rotate their way in. It looks as though they don't want to get in, in an engagement with Twists and, and Co over there as sort of driving adjacent to one another, parallel driving from both of these guys. They both have the same goal to get themselves into the zone and maybe get themselves onto a higher position. You see those mountains in zone, craggy, uh, the catty corner area down at the southern side of the map. Very, very hilly, very difficult for teams that have it on low ground. So maybe we'll see a more successful high play from Asian Japanese team this time. Yeah, and that's what's gonna be important is getting a nice positioning and controlling the fight from around you. So we'll see if they're able to do that. But it looks like uh, Shadow and company are gonna go for the cosmic the cosmic chest this is a new addition here in the season seven but they made some adjustments to it in season eight if you don't know they actually appear later in the game than they used to they used to appear like before first zone or uh, even starts moving now it's like second potentially third zone before you can actually get access to a cosmic crystal and uh, or a cosmic chest so interesting to see the changes and, and we'll see if it balances out at all but with the way that they're set up I'm pretty excited to see how this works in comp. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can yield some great loot and some great results from opening one of those, getting the likes of legendary and epic pump shotguns, of course. Now we're seeing Revised and his trio getting in a bit of an engagement right here. Maybe two or three different individual trios getting involved in the north of Lazy Lake as they do find an elimination right there, but now they can't laugh too much because there is another trio rotating on in. It's Prudus right there going down in the elimination feed. We're seeing 20 uh, getting an elimination as well in the feed as now. Revised Storms and Brew. These guys they're pulling out a few emotes there, but they've got to be careful because there is a team just above them that see them as a potential engagement and a potential couple of eliminations. Yeah, I mean, they have to be careful. That's the thing, especially when, when you're so close to other players, you have to be weary of the third party potential. And that's what that team was attempting to do. They were trying to get involved. They, they wanted to be that third party. But uh, fortunately for them, though, they were in a really good spot. So if it did, if it did end up happening, they would have been healthy. They should have been able to take that fight easily. Now, D-Roller Visuals and Fristo, they're on the other end of the spectrum. They're on top of a hill fighting another team, so they don't have to really worry about uh, third parties too much. And they are in zone, so this can last as long as they need. But if they're not careful, this could be the end of their game five. Yeah, a little bit of an uncongested side of zone right here as Frist tries to get as much peace control on this player as he can. He does get a beautiful wall placement right there as well. Does get tagged up by a few other players. There is some teams looming towards the western side of this, and I think there is another party involved in this. So we're seeing Bailout getting, unfortunately, getting down into his white HP. A scrub there getting hit hard with that purple or gold pump right there. The upgraded pump shotgun does so much damage, especially to the head as we see Hero the Visuals and Frisk. Looks like the only trio involved in this that are all up and healthy. Obviously, the usage of that shot cannon coming out in very, very good play right there. As we see, Dear Roller has got that gold pump shotgun. I think there is one more. There is one more player that they're trying to hunt out. They're trying to use their 
The best detective skills. Where is this final player? We know it's Scrub. We know he's all the way down there. We can see him, but of course they can't. We're hopping on board with Scrub right now. He's taking a med kit, but he's trying to be very, very sneaky. Yeah, and looking at the situation at hand, he's going to have to be if they want to continue on throughout this game because with Bailout Playa and Nasum out of the game, it is all up to Scrub to try and make something happen. But when you got a team like D-Roller Visuals right above you, it is not going to be easy going, especially because it looks like Friss is not willing to leave without finding this final player. Yeah, he really is. And this is surely a really good free elimination for Frist and his trio. If they can close this one out nice and early and get that refresh, get that little bit of loot, of course, as well, that they need going into this end game. So they are taking a little bit longer than they would like with this fight right now. We're seeing D-Roller, Frist and Visuals. The other player doing very, very well to get away. But now he falls to a 116 shot from D-Roller. Not quite to his full elimination yet, though, but it's going to be very, very close. And there it is. It looks as though that was... A very, very close engagement. I think, no, he didn't go down. I thought it, I thought he went down. He did not. He's still alive. Scrub is still alive. He's running away, <laughs> running like crazy. But you can only run so far. You cannot. You can run, but you can't hide from the visuals, D-Rider, and Frist team right here. Yeah, they are an aggressive team. So if they, they smell blood in the water, they're going for it. And that's why, that's what you just saw there. They went for it. But another team that's going to need a breakout performance here if they want to continue to climb the leaderboard is Shadow Asian Jeff in 20. They found themselves in eighth place after the last game, but with the way that they're playing so far, three eliminations on the board, they could continue to climb. And that spells doom for some of these other teams that felt secure or solidified in the top 10 in the leaderboard. Yeah, definitely seeing Jeff's trio in a really, really good position right now. They have very good loot, of course. Those eliminations are going to be so crucial for them when going into the end game. Their Storm Surge is not going to be their prime concern. Of course, now we're seeing Trentman and his duo right now. It looks as though Monkey has been eliminated. So Ketsy and him have to try and maybe rotate out of this retail row area as the storm is closing in. There's a lot of teams that are going to be waiting for them, ready to pounce up on that hill. So they're going to have to be very careful with how they rotate this. Of course, no usage of the launch pad this early for them. I guess they don't want to use it. They have got the pepper to rotate, of course, as well. They can use this hill to block the line of sight of those players up on the high ground. And maybe they'll get in unscathed. Yeah, that's going to be the goal for them as Trentman and company just rotate uh, around with the Peppers. And these things are just so effective in rotating this season. It's nice to see them be able to use them in the way that they are. You do see, however, there are a lot of teams ahead. So if they are not careful, they can easily find themselves caught out by what's going on. Now that we focus on Ghoul and Ghoul does get a couple tags off. So there's going to be a couple of those surge tags for them but not comfortably in zone yet, so he's going to have to continue to move. Yep, they are, but we're seeing them use this hill to block that line of sight once again, just like the other teams did when they were rotating on in, just at the bottom of this hill, using the hill as a, a, as a way to be able to connect their builds as well, so they're not going to get broken down as easily if they were to want to make a play or height or something up on this hill. It looks as though we're seeing the zone right now. There is a big mountain in the zone. How's that going to play out? Is the team on the mountain going to try and hold it? Or are they going to try and maybe try and just give it up to another team and then retake high later on? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we are going to have to wait and see. But looking at the way that uh, Danny Suscript and Twist are set up, they could be good to go for high ground if it begins to pull in their favor. But we all know there is no way to be sure where that fifth zone is going to pull to. So uh, they just wait and prepare and hope for the best. Yep, they're really be hoping that the luck is on their side for the, the next zone. Looks as though they do have the opportunity right now to have the high ground, at least for now. Maybe get a few t a Storm Surge tags as much as they can just to ensure that they don't have to worry about that going into the end game. We see the heal off condition as well using the... Uh the chunk cannon we can see in their inventory. They do have the usage of a harpoon, of course, as well, which could be very useful. Poppy right there. They're going down the elimination feed. We're seeing Yuz and Coda. These guys are left as a duo. This is an engagement that they need to take because this is important. They need this storm surge. If they can get it, they do. Ved there going down to Yuz, getting some great, great uh, AR shots on him right there. And he does have that bolt action sniper in his inventory. You talked about it earlier. This is crazy. Yeah, so this is going to be one of the rare occasions that we see the bolt action in play. And if you're one of these other players, you might not be uh, understanding or, or know that this thing is in your game. So you, 
you might be able to see some nice sniper eliminations coming through. And I think that's what we're seeing right now as Yaz just looks to take some shots out with that sniper in hand. Yeah, this is a really, really good device. Of course, if someone is spraying your wall, then it does give the opportunity to maybe get a nice sniper shot all the way through the build. If, of course, a lot of these teams aren't aware necessarily that this team do have the sniper, and it's very uncommon to have that in a team's inventory right now. So it's good to uh, definitely catch some teams out off by surprise, and I'm sure they might be able to get a snipe on high and maybe go for it as well. We're seeing Crackly and his trio looking as though they need to try and make their way into the zone. Very, very tough situation for them as they're getting sprayed from almost every single team up on the high ground. Looks like a little bit of respite for them right now, but maybe not as they still take those shots from the high ground. This next zone pod is going to be so crucial to depend on how this match goes. And they do pull it. Not only did they pull it, but another team we haven't seen make their way into an end game, and we see it now, is Jivy, Shonyi, and Somerset. This is a trio that we were looking forward to watching early on, but they've had a lot of issues off spawn. Now they find themselves in a nice position, but as I say, as Storm Church takes effect, Somerset left alone as, as Jivy and Shonyi goes down, so Somerset just completely disengages here, does get them above the damage threshold for Storm Surge, but now finds herself as a solo player. Yeah, she did really well right there. So to get a knock on the Benji player, I believe it was. So she's not in zone, though. She's a very, very long distance in zone. I do believe she has the uses of that launch pad. So timing on this is going to be absolutely vital and ensuring that she doesn't get too involved with any other trios, of course, because she is now a solo. So it's going to be very tough for her to, to clutch up too much. But I believe in her. I think she can do it. Yeah, I do too. Seeing the way that she's launching in here, she's avoiding shots, playing that bottom layer effectively. She just needs to continue to be safe and be careful. And quickly, you see Somerset identifying that's not her ceiling above, takes it, and uh, now has a bit of control here in the zone. But as a solo, you have to make some big things happen. And we, we've seen solo players do well by themselves in the end game. And I believe that Somerset may be showing a similar performance here in this game. Yeah, Somerset, of course, performing very, very well. I believe it was the qualifier number three of X trios in its season seven. So he definitely knows how to play at the highest level. And I'm sure she'll be able to put that uh, into play right there. She gets an elimination in the feed right there. The, right there, we're seeing uh, Pal, Peterbot, and Glepo's trio right now all a little bit low on the HP. Not up to as they would like right now, but so the, uh, the zone, the moving zone does follow. And he goes down right there. Pal, so does Glepo. It's all up to Peterbot on his own. Very aggressive player. We know that. I believe it's Asian Jeff's trio. It is that are taking him out. Two players, Peterbot, all on his own right now. The force of Asian Jeff and his trio is in inbound. He's going to be trying to get this medkit off, but is he going to get it off? I don't know. Yeah, this is going to be tough and very, very close. He does actually get the medkit off and one flopper in hand just in case he has to tank any kind of storm. Now, though, with all the players still remaining, it's going to be very, very close. You see Somerset down there right in between Peterbot and some other teams. Like, this is going to be tough. That is two solo players effectively trying to play out the final moments of game number five. But the shots are coming out. People are flying in the air. Larson of even Squisher. This is one of our this is our top team as of right now. They're looking to maintain that consistency that they've done so well to build throughout this game or these games. Yeah, and looking to build up some of that consistency right now is Somerset, of course, on her own. Done very, very well to get an elimination to, of course, get her some good materials, which is looking pretty good right now. But the Storm Surge, she's below, 198 below her right now. 13 teams to remain. Great tag, though, on that play, but it's not quite enough as she goes down. It was a good try all, all, all on her own, but unfortunately does fall right there to Peterbot, who is a solo as well. Solo versus solo engagement right now. Yeah, and as we talk about engagements, it is saying Cody and Haley trying to hold high ground, but quickly another team approaches. Now, though, you see Saiyan using the launch pad there to get back up. They did get a knock onto one of the teammates, but will they be able to continue to take out the rest of the team? That's the question we're all looking to get answered as Cody continues to build out and fight for the high ground. I think Matthew, solo player right now, or at least on his own right now. I don't know where his trio is. He might be a solo. We might be seeing another solo clutch from him as we see Lady's trio right now. These guys are a little bit of, I think they're second height right now. So they do want to be trying to drop down a little bit here. We're seeing the consistent 
trio, the consistent kings, Aviv, Squish, and Larson. Not too many eliminations to their name, but they're racking up those placement points, ensuring that they play their layers very well. And there's the elimination. I believe it was, uh, was it Foppy? Yeah, Foppy going down to Squish right there. Very, very great elimination for them. They might be able to pick up that refresh. Yeah, and they do get the materials drop. Larson does get to grab those as they, the zone pulls back over the water right now. So it's going to be intense for teams on low ground. It is going to be very intense. Another team in formal actually getting set up for success there with the Chug Cannon. That is a huge advantage for them to have in the inventory. Also, Squisher 20 still involved. HSF does go down there, but Shadow and 20 still up. And with power weapons in hand, they get a huge knock on the revive. He gets another knock right there as well, 20. Of course, Asian Jeff down. He gets another one again. He's absolutely popping off. We're seeing our first place team right now. They squish and uh, Aviv and Larson. Larson is down right now, though. But that is a great elimination from Squish and Aviv. That was really, really good from them. Getting that refresh is so important, especially as a duo right now. You don't have that extra inventory to hold those materials with 13 teams. With 17 teams remaining, 13 uh, players above. What? up right now this is good to see we're seeing aviv at the front side of zone and yeah it's difficult to run it and chris Matrio looks to be on high right now this is how this is all playing out so many old bills down below maybe being on high might be the play it may actually be the the play here but larson and aviv and squish they are giving me that arkham rex and epic whale vibe how consistent they are being in these games i am just impressed and how they continue to hold on despite anything that is thrown their way. Now though, Frisk, D-Roller Visuals holding on to high ground really effectively. You see them applying pressure, Squisher by himself, or here, one HP and a dream as Aviv just tries to break ahead for him. They are gonna need something if they can get to, to heal up. Frisk now looking to take shots, Squisher just below there, trying to replace that. It isn't gonna help. Frisk ends up taking quite a bit of damage there to Storm. Now it is about the final moments here in this game. There are four teams remaining as the players just continue to drop like flies. Yeah, we're seeing Fristy Roller and Visual playing high ground so effective. We're seeing XMB in the storm using that chuck. And look at how many items, look at how many healables he has on offer right there. Frisk going down in the storm as well. It looks as though it's a heal off versus a heal off. Visuals and D Roller against XMB. I think it is going to be D Roller and Visuals. They still have the HP advantage, but I don't think XMB has the options or the ability to heal up anymore. He uses the launch pad in an attempt to make his way back in, but no, he goes down. D Roller, Frisk, and Visuals come out on top in game number five what a game and that's a huge win for them d-roller uh, and company they're an incredible trio to watch and they ultimately walked away with that victory royale and doing quite well but we got to talk about some of these other teams because saiyan was doing extremely well we see matthew had high ground at one point and the high ground just continued to shift and then it was them it was somerset jivy holding on Somerset as a solo player, clutching up, getting eliminations, and a few more placement points to bring them a little bit higher on the leaderboard. Yeah, it's gonna be so important to see how they play this final game, of course. Well, they haven't had too good of a time off spawn that particular trio, but as we saw, Somerset, very, very good player in herself, and of course, her, of course, her trio, they know what they're doing. When they make it to end game, and if they can in game number six, I think they can definitely move up the leaderboard and uh, try and get into that money uh, positions. Yeah, and they should be able to do so as long as they play effectively in the last game. They got to make sure they win that off-spawn engagement. But before we can get to that last game and find out if they win that off-spawn engagement, we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
set me free or give me death, yeah. yeah. Living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man, I'm on my way, yeah. You can find out, you on time out. You been dealing with the devil, where you sign at? Yeah. Oh, Lord, you getting financed. Me, I'm talking ownership, baby, that's where my mind at. Try that, yeah. Me, I threw my money down. And you know that it's good, we can skip the run around. And I don't need no yes, man, I'm all the way down. Yo, and I am not for sale, that's in case you couldn't tell, but you're no better now, sure. You can set me free or give me death, yeah. Uh, living good, I've been blessed, yeah. Shout out all my enemies, all the best. You can set me free or give me death, man. I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way, yeah. Man, I'm on my way, yeah. And I can do this all day, man. I'm on my way, said I'm on my way, yeah. I'm on my way. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the final game of the evening. Game number six is upon us, and so many teams are clamoring for the top, and we got to look at the leaderboard before we get into this final game because uh, there are a lot of teams that still are in contention for one of those top spots, but if you're Larson, Aviv, and Squish, you're feeling pretty comfortable at the top. Yeah, they're definitely feeling pretty comfortable indeed. Average place of a fourth for them right now. They've had a third, a first, a third, a tenth, and a third. They haven't had a, a game outside of the top 10. Unbelievable scenes from them. And of course, getting those eliminations. They've had 46 eliminations so far. So they really are on top and they're in a commanding position. If they can keep up that consistency for game number six, then I'm sure they'll be able to come away with first place. Yeah, I mean, look, and then we flip over to this page and there are still teams that could make their way into the top 10. Teams like Informal, Creo, and Purs trying to work their way up. You got Ghoul, Spirits, Fane, Matthew, Gingerbread, AG. Like, the list goes on because there is still so much potential here going into game number six, but it will require a big game. So will you be able to clutch up in these final moments? That's what we're looking forward to finding out. We've seen high ground win games. We've seen low ground win games. But it is the final game. And I got to ask you, Miner, which place do you think is going to win? Do you think high ground is going to win this game? Do you think low ground is going to win this game? Or do you think something just crazy is going to happen? I would really like to see Larson, Aviv, and Squish go out with a bang and win the final game. It would be incredible to see whether they go for the high ground, whether they keep it consistent and stick to their morals, stick to that consistency. We'll have to find out. Personally, I've been seeing low ground team been doing very, very well today. We've seen some great heal offs and of course, the high ground being able to be taken over by some launch pads very, very quickly makes it not that viable of a strategy for every single team. So maybe we'll see low ground again. I don't know. What about you? Yeah, I, I think we're going to definitely see uh, a, an interesting shift in high ground. I think we've seen it progress over and over again through these games. More people are contending towards high ground. So we'll see a lot of contention happening in those final moments, which makes me believe low ground will come out on top in this final game. As we dive in, it is time. The battle bus is loaded and ready to go. Here it is, the final moments of today's Play versus High School Trio event on the East Coast. The ultimate moment of the tournament, game number six. The vibes are high. Every single person is excited, I'm sure, as us to watch this final game unfold. See what happens. See who is going to be winning their final off-spawn fight of the day. We're hopping on board with Somerset's trio, who do look as though they are sticking to their drop spot going into game number six. They haven't had too good of a time off-spawn so far today, but last game we saw them winning off-spawn at that hydro area that they seem to be landing at at the first stage of their game. So maybe they'll be using that winning mentality and that knowledge to their advantage in being able to hopefully for them, beat Seabear's team off spawn once again. Yeah, and it looks like Somerset and one other teammate are going straight for the uh, the slurp truck here. 
So this is going to be interesting. They're going to be good to go. It looks like watching out in the distance, though, Crunchy is there. So if they're not careful, Crunchy could get involved. And Somerset quickly identifies that, gets in the truck, and starts to rotate. Now it's all about surviving here because don't, don't forget, there is that other team that has been contesting them throughout this entire tournament. Yeah, speaking of contesting as well, we're seeing the dirty Adox battles going down once again. Bills, Sidric, and his teammate Dev right here. Looking as though they're on the back foot in this engagement. And yes, Dev does go down right there. It looks as though Cody does take him out up on high ground. Halady, uh, Saiyan and uh, Cody right here up on top. Not too many builds though for Halady right now. If he can try and get as much as he can. This is so important. It's now a 3v2 right now though. So this is quite an early finish to this fight. We're usually seeing this fight drag on a little bit longer than we uh than we've seen in other fights but they're really getting this fight out of the way nice and early allowing them to loot up and rotate their way into zone yeah they're doing an, a really good job of, of trying to just take care of this quickly but looking at saying it does look like there's another player right there close by could have been a big tag but it wasn't it is builds too holding out trying to survive you know they're all in the early game none of them have the additional material to make some big things happen so they're all just trying to play patiently. And that's why we, we haven't seen somebody go down quite yet. But as I say it, the trio is eliminated and Saiyan's team comes out on top. Yep, they do. Dirty Dogs is theirs for game number six of today's tournament. It's a huge moment for them now. They're going to be really, really excited going into this game. Of course, they have the entire POI. They do have to rotate in two zone towards the western side of the map, but that's going to be really, really good for them. They have good loot, of course, as well. So they're going to be happy with how that's going and how that's gone already. Maybe they can take that, that uh, momentum and that, that confidence going into the end game and potentially getting themselves into a good game. We're seeing our... One of our top teams right here going to game number six. Our second place team visuals, Frist and D-Roller using the Harpoon very effectively. Brings him over. Great shot, but not Ooh. quite great enough. And it's visuals that goes down. Listen, the edit course plays aren't always the plays to make as uh, you see visuals go down there pretty early. But it does look like they should be able to get the res off. So that'll be nice for them. But there are still players at play within this trio. Unfortunately for them, they got the shakedown done. They know where they're at. So now it's just about healing up, getting ready, and continuing on this aggression that they need to do if they want to walk away with that top spot. Yeah, it looks as though the trio that they just, or one of the players of the trio they eliminated, it looks like the rest of that trio is rotating on out. They don't want this engagement. And it's Zayt Jr. who's driving away. He hasn't got too much shield. Brist, Visual D-Roller may see this as a really good opportunity to get some get some tags off, maybe even an elimination if Zayt Jr. doesn't drive off into the horizon, which they do manage to break that car. Yes, they do. There's the damage, and now they might be able to push in there, or are they just going to play it safe, go to the Orchard area, and try and continue to get some more loot, of which they already have some very good loot already. Yeah, they're, they're situated pretty well, but I think they realize, you know what, it's too far. Like, they, they don't have the advantage there anymore. So uh, they're just going to disengage. But a team that's not going to disengage is Vortex, Twix, and Smite. Going up against Shadow and, and Jeff here. Uh, and it looks like they might have the advantage here as Jeff and Shadow are just struggling to hold on there on the low ground. Yeah, we're seeing 20 there as well. I believe they're all still up. Yep, 3v3 situation. We've seen Jeff's trio perform very, very well when they do make it to the end game. And of course, they'll be wanting to close out this fight, or maybe they want to disengage and ensure that they make it into the final stages of this final game of the tournament. Now, we're seeing Twix smite and his teammates right here. They're just playing it very, very carefully. As we're seeing, this is a really, really interesting strategy. Look, we see Vortex on the right side, smite and Twix on the left side. Sort of funneling their their fire into a 20 shadow and asian jeff they really are playing different angles which could work out to their favor but if jeff shadow and 20 identify that they could all just jump on vortex they they really could they could end up uh, uh turning this fight around and that's what they're looking to do you see jeff just trying to gather some intel neither team probably has a ton of mats because it's still pretty early but you know, if you're if you're Jeff and Twenty, you're playing this together. You're playing it smart. You have the boxes and control down low. It's not even worth trying to over aggress on another team, especially when you don't know what's in the inventory. 
Yeah, I think that's true. They sort of found that out earlier on in the tournament today, and now Nerface mm -hmm. and his trio are definitely under fire. The Coral Castle Wars are all going on, and it looks as though he wants to try and launch that away. Jeremy right there going down though in the elimination feed. That's Stacky and his trio. Now Nerface has got to try and get out of here as quickly as he can, utilizing those new sort of jump uh, pants inside of Season 8 to rotate on out. I don't think Stacky's team are going to push that though. Nerface will have an opportunity to maybe go back and grab those reboot cards because of course they do have that extended time now. Yeah, and, and look, if you're a Chimps team, you're feeling pretty confident going into this final game, getting two eliminations early on. But for a team like that, to make their way up the leaderboard, they are going to need some more. They are in seventh place going into this final game, but you know they don't want to settle for that. That's why you see them going early on for those eliminations and picking up two of them along the way. Yep, that's really, really good for them. And we're seeing a very, very patient style of play from both Asian Jeff and Vortex's trio right here. They're both just... They're not afraid, but they're definitely wanting to play it a little bit smarter, a little bit careful, a little bit more careful than they have done in the past. We saw Asian Jeff's trio in, particularly in game one, going all out fighting in this sort of lake area of the map. But listen, there's almost no gunshots. There's no third parties. There's not too much going on until now. It looks as though Shadow is trying to make his way into the box of... Asian Jeff and now Twix and his trio are going to mark an attack right here onto Asian Jeff's trio. This is where it all starts to heat up as Asian Jeff's trio do try and rotate on out using the car as a rotation device. Vortex trying to move that car up as well and set the builds on fire as well as that wooden house. So they have the high ground. They have that potential. But of course, the storm is closing in. The storm is closing in, and both for both teams, this is not a position you want to be in, especially not in the final game. Both looking to now take storm damage to survive throughout this engagement. At some point, you have to just decide when to disengage. It looks like Shadow and 20, Jeff, they tried to disengage, but they aren't going to let it happen. But after looking at this inventory, I don't think it matters. Jeff, 20, and Shadow, they're set to go. They can sit here as long as they need to and heal off until this other team has no other options. Yep, plenty of medkits in their inventories. As long as they can survive the spray from above, they will be able to outlast the storm. And that's what's so crucial. We're seeing Vortex and Strio. Uh, I believe they do have the use of a chunk cannon. Did I hear that? Or maybe just, yeah, they do. They have the chunk cannon. They do have bandages as well. So they're in a pretty good situation as well to stay in storm a little bit. This might not work out well, though, for them. Because even though if they do win this off spawn engagement, they're going to have to rotate on in and they may get focused as they do rotate into the zone. So they either want to fight this, get it done quickly, and get into the zone or they both just disengage and think, okay, let's just focus on our own team and not go for these eliminations. I can't imagine that this works out in anybody's favor. At some point, somebody's got to go. Somebody's just got to go get out of Storm. It's not worth it. And, and I think that's what Shadow, Jeff, and 20, that's what they're trying to do. Uh, but will they be allowed to do it? I think that's the question. It does look like Spite, Twix, and Vortex, they've identified that they're trying to get away and they do not want to let it happen. Shots are coming out, raining out, but it's not going to be enough to get them. Now you see, actually, one of their teammates just ran out of material there. So it's up to Vortex and, and Smite here to just get involved. And uh, with, the, with everything going on here, it's going to be tough to survive, especially with the lack of material for this team. Yeah, we saw, of course, Twix's team having to use that chug cannon allows them to heal up a lot quicker. Of course, we see Asian Jeff's team. They only had the uh, the medkits on on offer, but it looks like they do get that chug cannon, of course, getting Smite eliminated right there. We see Jeff and his trio getting another elimination on a Vortex, and I think that's them cleared out that entire trio. No, Twix is all on his own now, all on his own with only his bandages. He has got that purple pump option, but yep, they've forced him to run away to get out of that situation. So again, it hasn't really suited either team necessarily because, I mean, I guess Asian Jeff's team can reap the rewards, but they have to rotate on in at, uh, about the fire of Twix right now. Though, if he can, if he can try and look back at them and maybe try and get some shots off as a solo. I don't think he's gonna be able to do it though. I think the smart play here for Twix is to wait until they pass and then go back for the cards. Because remember, there's a reboot van right there in that IO area as well. So as long as he doesn't take shots, he should be good to go all the way back. Because like you saw, 20, Jeff, Shadow, they don't realize that he's still there. Yeah, that's very true. That's a very, very good idea for him to do now. But of course, the storm is coming in again. 
They're getting the pressure off the storm now. He's going to try and get those reboot cards as we see he does. So is he going to reboot here? Maybe he will choose another location to reboot. But maybe those new Season 8 reboot cards being able to have that extra amount of time definitely playing into his favor right now. As he does want to try and make his way into zone. Or will he reboot here? He does. Okay, so I mean, it's going to be, I believe, a two-tick zone once they do... Once that storm does close in in a minute, 20 seconds time. So this might not be the play for them. Looks so he is down on HP as well. No heals to uh, heal himself back up with. What does this mean for this team? Well, looking at the situation at hand, right? Twix is going to be able to use this to, to launch his way in. And he does have a second launch pad in the inventory. So if he uses it correctly, he should be able to get a decent amount of the way in before he goes down. But, of course, as I say, that 3 HP in his dream, he is going to go down. Fortunate for him, though, his teammates should be able to pick him up. But the zone is still going to continue to close. And when it does close, it is going to be a two tick. Yeah, it is. And, of course, Vortex and Smite right there. They don't have any heals. They don't have really any loot. Look at that. He has a gray pistol and a gray lever shotgun right now. Can he try and find some heals? Which he does. Look at that. That's almost a gold mine wow. right there. He's found himself a flopper. He's found himself a medkit, which is good. That's good enough. But will it be good enough to get them into the zone without being focused? Of course, they're going to have the HP deficit uh compared to other players i mean these guys are these guys are in a really difficult situation we see crackley's team just on the outside of zone so this could be tough for them although they might make it in how healthy are they going to be when they do make it in well for smite especially you see smite very low on, on effective hp doesn't necessarily have what they need in the inventory vortex does find a vehicle and potentially could go back and pick them up but it's still going to be pretty tight as the storm now ticks for two but the focus is on for Somerset and Jivy as they have survived, but they have lost Sean Yi. Yeah, they have. We've seen what they can do in the end game. So, of course, it is the final game. Maybe they have Sean Yi's reboot card, which is maybe why they're rotating over towards this Pleasant Park reboot van. If all three of these guys can get picked up and are alive going into this end game, I really think they can do some really good things. We saw Somerset with a great clutch in that previous game. Not quite enough to go too far in the end game, but. Proving that they are very, very good at playing this endgame. We're seeing Cody and his trio in the center of zone, having that mythic as well. And yeah, Somerset going for that reboot on Shonye. As she does have to engage with these other people right now, though. There's another team rotating on in. Somerset down to 42 HP. He'd be having to pick up the pieces right now if Somerset can go and heal up. This team are going to be healthy. This team are going to have good loot. But of course, Shonye only has a great pistol. Yeah, but let's be honest, the Grey Pistol is still very, very effective if used correctly. But for Storms, Brew, and Revise, they understand what's going on here. So they're going to get as involved as possible. That's why you see Storm big tag onto Somerset as Somerset goes down. Another big tag there onto what looked like Shun Yi. And he does end up getting knocked. Now it's Storms trying to heal up, get ready for the rest of this, because it is all up to Jivy to make something happen. Yeah, can he make it happen? We're seeing the revised Bruin Storms trio trying to hunt him down. Where is he? He's trying to make his way out of this engagement. The reboot play might not have been the answer, unfortunately, for Somerset's trio. Now, GB having to clutch up on his own. There's a bunch of players all around him. Revised Storms and Brew pouncing on him all as one if they can. They're going to try and save as many materials whilst doing so as possible. And yes, they do get a, a, a Elite GB right there going down in the elimination feed. So that's really good for them, but unfortunate for the Somerset trio. Yeah, and, and looking at the elimination feed, it looks like Vortex and company have gone down as well. So they are going to go down in this game despite getting the reboot there after all of that fighting with Asian Jeff. But... Crackly and Coldy, this is the team that ended up taking them out. Now they have four eliminations on the board and uh, some power weapons here going into the final moments of this game. Yeah, they do, particularly that purple pump being so effective. We saw it being used very well in the previous engagement that we just watched. It's a very, very good weapon. It has very good range, of course, and does the 108 to the body. So incredible damage from this weapon, and we're going to hopefully see it put into good play and good use in this end game. These guys looking pretty good, though. Cold AFN and uh, Crackly and Co. These guys are really on the sort of uncongested side of zone, where unfortunately for Brew and his, his team, they might get focused if they're a little bit later coming into zone, as we've seen that happen right now. D-Roller, Frist, and Visuals. These guys looking to try and get some tags on them, but 
they're healthy. They're they're well. They're they're looking okay. Got that usage of that purple pistol as well, which you haven't seen too much today. Yeah, look, the the purple pistol is is nasty in the wrong hand. So look, if if you know and you have good effective aim in this game. The purple pistol is the way to go. Ved, though, rocking <laughs> the new sideways minigun. I'm actually interested to see how Ved's going to use this here through these next few zones because if you use it effectively, you're going to get into anybody's boxes and you're going to do some damage. Yeah, especially it uses that mini ammo, of course, as well, which isn't usually traditionally taken by a lot of trees. That's another reason why that purple pistol is so effective, because you can just say to your teammates, okay, I'm going to drop you all of my medium bullets. If you drop me your light, then we can have a really, really good spread of ammo. So we're seeing Frisk's visuals D-Roller in the sort of central area of the map on top of the bridge right now, being able to control that entire area. You can see them. They've really refarmed that very effectively. Ved getting shot from all different angles right now as he tries to use that a sideways minigun to his advantage. Looks like they're going to try and get above this team right now. Maybe try and box fight them as well. If they do need some eliminations, of course, Pump having two. And that is it for the trio. But can Ved get themselves into the zone? I believe he can. He does have the issues of that minigun, though. But he's getting pressured. He's getting pressure from the north right now. There's another team that are right next to them. They're going to have to fight them out. And it looks as though Paper does go down. Pump, I believe, going down there as well. Oh, no, he's still up. He's No, he's not. He's down. Pump does go down. It's Nossen right there getting him eliminated. Now, Ved all on all on his own. He does try and find Nossen right here. Crackly and his uh, his trio trying to pounce them. Get those eliminations if they can. They've finished Paper and Pump right there. It's all up to Ved to try and clutch up as a solo. Or does he disengage and try and clutch up those eliminate these uh, placement points? Yeah, that's the question, right? Like, when you're a solo player in these final moments, what are you going to do? Especially considering they're a top 10 team. So uh, will we see that? Eh, it's going to be tough for Ved, but I do think he has that solo clutch potential. Now, though, we got to focus on Nas, Crackly, and Kolde as they've just been continuing to get eliminations left and right. So this could be a huge turnaround game for them. And there it is. I believe they finally found Ved, and Ved does go down. Yeah, that's really good for them. They're 1,800 damage above Storm Surge here. That's so crucial for them. Uh, unlike Bacon and his trio right now, these guys are below Storm Surge, but they do pull the half and half zone. So they can look at everyone rotating on in. Anyone maybe launch padding, of course, being able to get some really good AR tanks, of course, on there. And we're seeing Larson up on high at the... Uh, the other end of the spectrum, he has got the railgun usage, of course, as well. We talked about it earlier, about how effective this thing is for getting that Storm Surge tags. You can, I mean, it's like, what is it, about 180 to the head, I believe, with this with this purple version. So it is a very, very effective weapon to use. And if they're going to launch pad in here, they might be able to take height and may be able to keep it. Yeah, they may be able to do it. It would be interesting, to say the least, but... We'll find out here shortly as uh, Shadow is going to have to use the Chug Cannon probably a little bit uh, earlier than they anticipated. You know, listen, getting that effective HP is going to be super important, especially before you start gliding in the air here. Because the last thing you need to worry about is not having enough health to make your way all the way through without getting focused. Because with all the shots coming out there, he could have easily went down if they were looking at him. Yep, that was really, really good from this trio, of course, rotating on and using that launch pad pretty much unscathed as well, which is really, really great. Of course, they save their heals, they save their HP, which is unfortunate for D-Roller and co right now. D-Roller getting focused by almost every single player. It looks like Frisk and Visuals have both gone down, so he is now a solo. Our second place team going into this final game are now on the back foot. What could this mean? It could mean a big shift in the leaderboard, but oh, oh. as I say that, D-Roller does go down. It looks like Vanish is going to get the elimination there. Um, now, Zuzu, So, and Jarian Fan just are continuing to a pressure. Discount Benji and Royals here as they just try to hold off what's going on. But it looks like another high ground attempt for Danny, Suscript, and Twist. Will they be able to hold it, though? We've seen them do it time and time again, but will they be able to maintain the high ground? That's going to be the question here in the final moments of game number six.
Yep, we're seeing Larson and his trio first place leaders at the moment. They're still alive. They're still playing very, very passively. They're playing not even just passively, but very consistently, should I say. Of course, going into this final game with a lot of eliminations, we're seeing Danny and his trio right now trying to use that high ground effectively. Of course, these guys were in third place going into this final game, so I'm sure they've got their sights set on maybe clutching up second place, seeing that D-Roll of Frist and Visuals, of course, going down a little bit earlier on. This could be good for them. This could be really good for them. But what's not good for a team like Brutus is uh, they're still below the damage threshold. And Storm Surge is not forgiving. So if you do find yourself underneath that threshold, you're going to have to be careful because it, it is going to start punish you and your team. Especially for a team like this, they're only three damage below. So one shot easily gets them above. But it's about getting that tag when they can. Yeah, we're seeing Pal right there going down on the elimination field. Of course, they were fourth going into this uh, final game, so that'll be difficult for them to clutch up second place as well. We're seeing Saiyan in his trio right now. Really rotating very well. Beautiful starts from this player as Suscript, Danny, and Co. These guys are commanding high ground once again. These guys are looking very, very good right now. They do have the usage, of course, of that harpoon as well to get that refresh. Great tags with that first assault rifle as well. They're holding on to height with plenty of materials. And now we're on board with our first place team. Ooh, and as we see is Squisher getting the, some nice knocks and eliminations there. That is huge for them as they continue to climb the leaderboard. Now five eliminations in this game. They find themselves in 12 as of right now. And are, or with 12 teams remaining, I should say, they continue to play, or they plan to continue to climb the leaderboard. This is the final moments for them to really solidify that end game. But honestly, I don't see anybody taking first from them. Yeah, I really don't. They're so consistent right now. And of course, I believe it's it's, it's got to be second place up for grabs right now, especially for Danny's team up on high. We're seeing Squish, uh, Aviv, and Larson right now. They're currently in 11th place. 23 players remain. Someone jumps in the box, though. This could be it. Oh, no. It looks as though Aviv and Squish going down at almost the same time. Now, Larson has to clutch up as a solo. Great <laughs> elimination for him, though, as he does try and get that refresh. If he can, more tags onto more players from Larson as a solo. Our first place team are nearly eliminated. They've nearly all gone down yeah and larson just continuing to try and get some more eliminations and there it is a huge knock there for larson does get the oh and he does get the siphon that is huge now just trying to survive in the box with two other players gets another elimination there and he's trying Ooh. to survive but no it's not gonna be enough he does end up going down to storm now quiz suscript and danny on the high ground with a dominant performance can easily take second place yeah, definitely. They, of course, do have that railgun, of course. Well, we talked about it earlier. What a shot there, though, from uh, Twist right there. Another great shot we saw with the railgun trying to rain fire down using that build breaking ability. Of course, he only has one shot left in it, but he's done some great damage with that already. Getting that knock and that elimination on that play. We're seeing Twist, Danny, and Co. all the way up on a high. Ghoul and his trio down below. We're seeing Skane right there going down in the elimination feed. Ghoul and Spirits. These guys are one of the three teams that that do remain in this end game. Yeah, this is crazy to look at. Informal actually playing as a solo does go down to Danny. Now it is a trio versus a trio. Yeah, it's actually a 3v2 situation as Ghoul and Spirits are on the low ground looking to survive as Twist, Danny, and Saskrip continue to apply pressure from above. This is the final moment here. Shots raining in. Spirits goes down. It's not going to be enough as Danny, Suscript, and Twist take the final victory royale of the day. Wow, what a game. Another high grand take from Danny and Co. And a great victory royale from them. I mean, that's exactly what they needed. They were, I think they were fourth, I think, going into this game or third place. So that's going to really yeah. push them up in the leaderboard, hoping for them to push them up into that second place. Yeah, that's what they're going to be looking for here. That is a huge performance in the final moments of Game 6. And that's what you need. You need a, a defining change in the game, and they got it. Unfortunate for some other teams that, that fell maybe a little bit early. We saw teams like Somerset trying to make a comeback, unfortunately falling in the mid-game. But uh, look, Game 6 did not disappoint. The action was relentless. Larson, Aviv, Squisher getting elimination after elimination before they go down. Larson clutching up as a solo player there in the final moments too. I mean, there was just so much to unpack here in the final game.
Yeah, so much action. We saw solo clutches, trio clutches, and we saw high ground, low ground eliminations. We saw it all. That is Fortnite at its best. And we saw quite possibly one of the most consistent trios in today. I mean, definitely the most consistent trios uh, popping off once again in Larson, Aviv, and Squish. Of course, really great for Danny and Kota. Win on high ground. We saw that great elimination right there from Twist with the Railgun and Larson getting some great eliminations as a solo as well. Yeah, I mean, that solo impact that he had in this game was huge. Getting some well-needed points to, to maintain that high ground or maintain that first place spot, I should say, on the leaderboard. And uh, I think it's safe to say they probably did it. Yeah, I think so. They were just so consistent. So they have to commend that consistency. I don't think I've seen something like that in such a long time. The consistency uh, from them was unbelievable. Their placements were unbelievable. And they also got the elimination points to go along with it. Quite possibly a perfect performance from them. Yeah, look, we, before we got these leaderboards going, we got to talk about it. What is your top three? Who do you think ended up coming out top three in this before we jump into this leaderboard? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Larson, Aviv, and Co. They've got to take the top spot. As as far as the second and third place go, I don't know. It's going to be close. We'll have to wait and see. Well, wait no longer. Here it is, the final leaderboards, and there it is. Larson, Aviv, Squish taking first place with 380 points. That is a 63-point lead. Wow, that is consistency at its finest. Again, getting eliminations as well. And as you can see, they have the same average placement as the second place team. But it is, of course, those elimination points that really take home them the victory and the, the first place spot in today's tournament. Of course, they just did so well getting eliminations, getting high placements as well. And, you know, not to say that Danny and Co didn't do too well, because, of course, in that final game, getting a victory royale with eight eliminations to push them into that second place position, they did very well to clutch up there. Yeah, they, they absolutely crushed it in the final moments. They did everything they could going into that final game. I mean, literally, their placements were, were fifth, third, second, sixth, tenth, and then first, getting that final victory royale. So that's huge for them. And then looking at the leaderboard here, you got fame, ghouls, spirits. Remember, top 10 or top 15, I should say, end up getting you some of that prizing. So huge performances here from these teams. Uh, all the way down to Pamsto, though, it started off really, really strong, but then ultimately found themselves falling into 19th place. Yeah, really unfortunate for them, of course, a trio with high potential. Of course, they had a really, really good start, a 14 elimination victory royale. So not quite able to replicate that in the in the, in the, in the final five games, but we're seeing the final stage of the lead ball right there. But some incredible action today, some of the best of the best and some really, really great talent on show. Yeah, I mean, look, we've watched some incredible games, but if you were excited, if you enjoyed what we did here, don't worry. There is a lot more coming because guess what? Play Versus continues to bring you the action with more Fortnite Trios events coming up here soon. Enrollment opens Monday, September 27th. So make sure to get signed up. If you're not sure how to sign up, make sure to check out Play Versus on all socials. All the information will be there. They will take good care of you because you have opportunities to walk away with prizing like these players just did. So uh, make sure to go check that out when you can. But that's going to be it for today. Miner, any final thoughts before we head out? I don't know. I mean, I've just seen some of the most incredible action today. Uh, some of the greatest uh, con consistency we've ever seen. Some of the greatest eliminations. And we've seen, we've had a little bit of a taste as to what Season 8 competitive Fortnite could bring. So a very well done to everyone that performed today. And of course, it's only the first tournament this season. So I'm sure there'll be plenty more opportunities if there are some teams that maybe didn't perform the best today. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more, but that's going to be it from us today. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Remember, get signed up for that next enrollment. But until next time, take it easy. Peace. Bye-bye.